Warning, the following video is over-exaggerated. Well, I guess. This game does kind of suck, so don't get your rings all rung up. Sega sure loved the 3D. I mean, look how overly excited the title screen is. Even the menus are obsessed with 3 d ifying everything, like this timer. It could have been in 2D, but no, 3D, that was the cool thing back then, yo. How is the demo so good? You can't move as smoothly as shown, trust me. When you first play the game, all the locked characters are grayed out except for Dr. Robotnik. Wait, there's only five courses? This game came out in 1997. Heck, Super Mario Kart released in 1992 with twice as many courses. What the ass is this control? Why is the music so catchy? It's not at all appropriate for a Sonic game, but uh, you know, I do kind of like it, but uh, you know, don't, don't tell anyone I said that, okay? This is the ugliest Sonic game I have ever seen. It's so polygonal. The textures are blurry and muddy. The whole thing's just Ugh. When you pause the game, the music doesn't stop playing. I hate when games don't go silent after pausing, they really should. So you can kind of drift with your character, but it really doesn't help much with the controls. So Resort Island isn't a linear track, which sounds fine, but the branching paths are so convoluted, you're just lost the whole time. Ugh, this song is stuck in my head now. When you go through loops, you lose complete control of which direction you're going in. Flying. I'm stuck. I'm seriously stuck. <laughs> what? What is happening? <laughs> I can't even... I'm stuck. Come on, come on, come on, come on, go all the way around. Get off of the freaking loop. Oh my gosh. Getting the fastest time for most of these tracks involved taking completely alternate routes. That's a sign of little to no game testing. Trying to turn around just doesn't work. When unlocking new characters, the text looks like it says, prepare to challenge. Playing as Amy. Don't do it. This S coin is hiding behind the wall. Now, who here is gonna look for something like that in a racing game? There's only going forward, not exploring. Tails doll. That creepy freak. Racing Tails Doll for the first time is way too easy. It moves so freaking slow. I just realized how uninspired and lazy this character roster is. We got three Sonic characters, two Tails characters, two Knuckles characters, and kind of two Eggman characters. Amy's tires go flat when going over water. Is she a Transformer? When you boost with Amy, you can't turn or drift. Like I said, do not play as Amy. Okay, so there's like 50 branching paths. Where do I go? There is no character balance. You have Super Sonic, that's twice as fast as everybody, and then there's Tails Doll and Amy. None of the character's abilities outmatch Super Sonic's sheer speed. You just play as him and you win. That's it. Tails Doll doesn't really have any breaks. The thing just kind of moves and never stops. Wait a minute, Egg Robo can't jump? He has legs! When you get the super shoes, the tune that usually plays isn't present here. All right, so I got all the emeralds. Now, where is super si Oh, could they, like, not squeeze in another slot? If you want a seizure, just play Radiant Emerald from Sonic R. When Sonic R first came out, apparently people liked the game. What? Dr. Robotnik and Egg Robo's missiles are terrible. They have to be close to someone to lock on, and even if you hit someone, they stop for like half a second and that's it! They're completely useless. There's a mode where you collect five balloons. I wonder where they got this idea. The balloons are not only hard to see, but are put in the most ridiculous spots. But for some reason, I'm having more fun with this mode than the core game. After finishing a round of balloons, you're taken all the way back to the main menu screen. Why not put me back at the stage screen so it's quicker? Just look at how unfinished Radical City looks. Like, this is pathetic, man! Tag. I... can play tag. If there's one game genre that shouldn't have a tag mode in it, racing has to be my pick. If you can even call this a racing game. Warning. The following video is over-exaggerated. Not all opinions shared are accurate to my thoughts and views, so don't gag out of furball or whatever. This game is basically Super Mario 3D Land with more characters and an HD. 
The gesture of multiple controller options is nice, but why offer the Wii Remote? This is a 3D moving game. D-pads are meant for 2D only. The map screen isn't organized in sequential order. How dare they break tradition? I can jump around in the hub world, but I can't long jump? Why do the characters fart when they're running? Rosalina is playable, but not Waluigi? Or Wario? Or Reggie? This game is way too easy until like the last 20 levels or something. I can tell Nintendo was trying to force feed immersion by adding coins and blocks to the hub world. Eh, it doesn't work. The hitbox for touching the top of the flagpole is way too big. The one-up trick is stupid easy. Why does Nintendo even bother with lives anymore? They're meaningless. So the lottery thing is really dumb because you always win coins, even if you don't get a match. What's the point? I can't even touch the coins. We interrupt 3D World to bring you new Super Mario Bros. 2. There's these tents where you walk in and get a stamp. And that's it. There's no level or mini game, you just get it. Cat Bowser looks way too adorable. Yoshi was replaced with this orange Lapras thing. Multiplayer doesn't work with this game. The camera pans out way too far to see what you're doing. There's some binocular sections like in 3D Land, but now you can't zoom in or out, defeating their purpose. You can use the touchscreen to show hidden blocks, but I've never needed it. I always just find them on my own. The depth perception is so wonky. If there wasn't a shadow, there'd be no way to tell where you were. There's a spin move like in Mario Sunshine, which is nice, but it's not beneficial. Why do all of the enemies have to look like cats? Could you all please stop meowing? I can't tell you how many times I've accidentally picked up another player. The bullies are too easy to defeat. When you kill Bowser in his car or whatever, how does he float in the air for like five seconds? The game tells me how to ride Plessy every time. When you have a coin slash propeller slash light slash cannon box or the Goomba mask, you can't get rid of them unless you touch an enemy. The levels after the final boss are mostly reskins of previous levels. Man, now I feel like I'm I'm just making the same video again without the loot crate ad. You can technically move the camera, but it has like no use at all. I still hate that you can't dive. Like seriously, it's the best 3D move ever. Why can't I fly with a Tanuki suit? Ugh, the white Tanuki suit, AKA safe space mode. Why should I care about saving the Sprixie princesses anyway? With Peach, at least Mario has some sort of relationship with her, but the Sprixies just come out of some random pipe and Bowser takes them. To fully beat the game, I have to play every stage with all five characters? It was bad enough in 3D Land doing this with two characters, but five? Jeez. I'm a fan of hard stages, but Champions Road takes it way, way too far. There's no extra modes, no multiplayer, time trials, mini games, anything. The levels are so short, yet we're given like three hours to complete them. Except for the 30 second stages, of course. But still, it doesn't make sense. For 3D Land, okay, I get why the levels are short because it's a handheld game, but this is a console game. Make your levels longer. This might just be me, but doesn't Mario sound less excited than usual? Woo! I mean, listen to him in the older titles. Woo! This kind of sums up the whole thing. Mario 3D World is good, but it has its issues, and overall, it just feels lost in the crowd. Warning. The following video is over-exaggerated. Not all opinions are accurate to my actual thoughts and views. So don't be all weed about this, okay? The name. The prototype name was Revolution. Man, they should've just stuck with that, it's cool. Nintendo sold a remarkable 100 million Wiis, but most of those were for Wii Sports and Wii Fit and never touched again. Wii music exists. The Wii's success brought us the Wii U, the most unsuccessful Nintendo console outside of the Virtual Boy. The Wii doesn't have HDMI hookups while the PS3 and Xbox 360 do. Where is the ethernet port? Why do I gotta buy a USB attachment? Wait. Did anyone even play Wii games online besides Mario Kart Wii? And no, Brawl doesn't count because... I mean, come on, it's Brawl. The nunchuck is basically a dildo. The Wii Vitality Sensor. Wii Speak was only used for Animal Crossing and shovelware, basically. Why can't I play DVDs? Oh yeah, the photo channel, I remember this. Fun? Yeah, I'd like to have some fun. Hmm, let's see. Whoa, 
Okay, that's a bit scary. Did anyone actually use the forecast and news channels? So, uh, YouTube on the Wii. It's, uh, it's how everyone should watch YouTube. The Mii channel is cool, but it's assuming the Mii's gender. Besides a few first-party games, there really isn't anything worthwhile or lasting to play. The loading times for the Wii Shop channel are so freaking long. They only added 21 N64 games to the virtual console? Why not all of them? The sad fact that your grandpa was better at Wii Bowling than you ever were. Where's my new F-Zero game? Or Star Fox, hmm? The Wii Remote takes batteries. Granted, you could get rechargeable batteries for the thing, but it still sucks. Why did everyone have that elastic shell thing on their Wiimotes? Let's be real. Unless you're playing a Wii Motion Plus game, the motion controls don't work as intended. The Wii was Nintendo's first dip into abandoning their hardcore audience completely, and it's still biting them in the ass. The classic controller isn't that great. It has no grips. It's like holding a bar of soap. Every damn game had to force in motion controls. The Wii overall was way too underpowered and has left them behind in the competition ever since. When inserting the disc, it has to be on a specific side. Ugh, so inconvenient. Why does every game tell me to take a break? Please, I do what I want. The string for the wrist strap was so cheap that there used to be a website dedicated to people's possessions destroyed by the Wiimotes. Trying to type with a pointer is so irritating. Warning, the following video is over exaggerated. Some opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and views. So toughen up a notch, won't ya? It's not melee. The loading screen to start the game is so long. This game makes so much noise in my Wii U. Mario, Luigi, and Wario are playable, but Waluigi is just an assist trophy? Okay, why does it default to the time matches? Everyone just switches to stock. Toon Link, why are you a clone of Young Link? <sighs> or, wait, Link? What? Yes! The super spicy curry, dude. Why does the timer in Lightning Bolt reverse its power sometimes? How can I trust that? The bumper in Brawl is on steroids. The Rumble Fall stage scrolls way too fast. I hate when your controls get reversed in Spear Pillar. Damn you, Palkia. The cars are too strong in Port Town Aerodive. Who let this stage pass the drawing board and into the final game? Or this one? Ugh, good lord. New Pork City is just a bad temple clone. I have... No words for how stupid this stage is. Don't get me wrong, I love Corneria, but why did they shrink the stage so much? Special Brawl is cool, but the customization is so limited. Like, where is the big head mode? And I also love stamina mode, but why can't we raise the number to like 1000? What? I can't wave dash or L cancel? I appreciate all the controller options, but... The Wii Remote? Really? When the online chose to work, the matches were laggy as hell. The Great Maze. Classic mode has never felt more dry. Meta Knight. Just... Meta Knight. Only five target test stages? Seriously? Peach's Final Smash sucks. Clone Final Smashes are also a thing. Half of Sonic's moves are just spin dashes. Master and Crazy Hand are way too easy to beat. The character item section in the credits looks so awkward. Co-op event matches? But I don't have any friends! Event 30 predicted one of the worst Wii U games. Who would sit through 15 minutes of this? Why does everything have to be ice? We weren't allowed to play custom stages online. How did they see that as a problem? There's only three backgrounds for custom stages. Some of these challenges ask for too much. My replays can only be three minutes long? Why can I only play mere seconds or minutes of a masterpiece? And why does Chronicle exist? If someone really wants a list of Nintendo games, Google. You can use motion controls? What? They call her Zero Suit Samus, but she still wears a suit, sadly. And Captain Falcon doesn't have a birthday suit. The color style tries to look dark and gritty, but ends up dirty and ugly. Get off of my freaking screen! I want to like Mushroomy Kingdom, but it scrolls too fast. Is he saying Fox? Or... Fox. That's creepy. Come on, step it up! 
Sonic's a dick. Rob's Final Smash is honestly pretty lame. The electric, flying, and ice versions of Pokemon Stadium 2 just aren't fun. Skyworld and Ike don't go together. Playing the adventure mode with co-op gets worse and worse the more you play. Those kissy face things are so annoying! And so are these regenerating guys! God, just die already! Ugh, look, do you need to be untriggered? Well, check out- Oh, yeah, and tripping. Yeah, tripping sucks. It's- it's bad. Warning! The following video is over-exaggerated. Some opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and views, so don't lose your coins about this. You can play on the title screen, but the logo's in the way. Even if I time it right, I can't get fireworks when I touch the flagpole. Spin-off game or not, Saving Peach is the plot. Again. Some of my amiibo aren't compatible with Mario Maker. I can't use the costumes in all the Mario engines, just the first one. Where's the slopes? Oh, oh wait a minute, they're in the Smash Bros stage. Thanks, Nintendo. Those levels where you just get a billion power-ups and that's it. Another recreation of World 1-1? Give me a break! Stupidly difficult levels. Like, come on, this isn't fun! Auto levels were cool for like five minutes. When you're trying to get a power-up from a block, but you just get an enemy. The 3DS port. You know, the one where you can't share your levels worldwide. I can make 2D levels, but not 3D? This has to be the only Mario game where 98% of the levels are just trash. Thanks, humans. Their search system is so backwards. Instead of searching for a name or something like that, no, I gotta type in a 50 million thousand password. Those levels that kill you almost instantly when you start. I wasn't able to use all the pieces to make levels right away. Those pixel art levels are cool, but rarely fun to play. Unlocking all the costumes is an insane task. You have to play hundreds of user levels, which most of them are unfair or just crudely difficult. I can play as a Mercedes-Benz car? Are you serious? Kitty White from Hello Kitty? What's next? Mickey Mouse, Goku, Clippy from Microsoft Word? Sean the Sheep? What? The Brain H- I- 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 can't- I can't do this anymore. Why is there shadows behind everything? It looks so tacky. Did Nintendo not realize Mega Man already had an 8-bit sprite? I thought squids didn't like the water. I can't add lava tiles. Mario puzzle levels are cool, but some just go way, way too far. If your courses don't get a bunch of stars, Nintendo straight up deletes it. 1-ups are completely worthless since there's no true story mode or whatever. Unless you play expert mode but still. Entering a door that kills you instantly. Why can't I make a snow level, or desert, or forest? Super expert mode. I'm not good enough to unlock it. Those levels that just show off somebody's amiibo collection. Man, they had the opportunity to include like every power up. But no, they had like five or something. There's no multiplayer mode. Wait, actually, that's, that's fine. I mean, hey, New Super Mario Bros. proved that multiplayer doesn't really work that well. The invisible block traps are not only more common, but almost always come with that laughing sound effect. Levels that actually are impossible, and what you're supposed to do is take some hidden block with some vine, you climb up to the, some pipe, and then you get to the end that way. When you're just sitting there and playing Mario Maker, and it's fun at first, you find a few stinkers, but the levels overall are pretty cool. Then you keep playing, and the levels just keep trolling you. Death to an invisible block! Death to lava! Death to spikes! Death to a Goomba! Death to... whatever that was! Then you just think, I just need practice! So you play more and more, but you slowly fall into a deep depression and just keep flicking the skip button, struggling to make any progress on expert mode. You tell yourself to just get good, but it doesn't happen. And the worst part is, is that it's not your fault. Most of the levels are set up to troll you. That's just what people have created. Then you realize there's nothing you can do but hope you don't get bad levels. And after getting fooled by the most random and impossible things and die a hundred times in a row, you turn the game off and never want to touch the game for how bull the game is. You know, some people say that Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels is the hardest Mario game of all time. Well, those people are wrong. I'm holding it right now. It's Super Mario Maker. It's unfair. It's bad. Go away! Warning, the following video is over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and feelings, because I actually like the Switch. Remember to stay cool, kiddos, and don't do drugs, okay?
why is the HDMI cable like five feet long? This is the year 2017 and the AC adapter is a giant brick. This fragile, flimsy kickstand is definitely gonna break. There is nothing to protect the screen when you put it in the dock. I swear I'm gonna scratch my screen from the frickin' dock. So this Joy-Con grip doesn't charge my Joy-Cons, even though the damn thing looks like a battery. Wait, there's a charging version? What the f***? My hands cramp up using the Joy-Con sideways. The wrist strap grips require so much force to take off. These Joy-Cons are way too tiny. I can hide them in my hands. You can actually put the wrist strap grips on the wrong way and get them stuck. There is very little push with the joysticks on the Joy-Cons. I don't get a game with the Switch? I have to spend more money? The battery life is awful. I can only play three hours of Zelda on the go. The dock looks like a toaster, but it won't make toast. The cartridges taste awful. The joystick and B button are way too close together. Friend coat? <laughs> Nintendo, oh, you've done so much right. But nope, them kids, oh, they want them codes. They like the secret codes, yeah! Why does the dock cost $90? I could break this thing in half if I wanted to. And $80 for two new Joy-Cons? Guys, don't, do not lose your Joy-Cons, holy crap. I can't use my Wii remotes anymore. The Switch didn't launch with Melee HD. You can't turn off the Switch with the Joy-Cons or the Pro Controller, only with the tablet. This is annoying if you're in TV mode. My credit card information doesn't save in the eShop, so I have to type it in every time I buy a game. Third parties might ditch the console in a year because it's not as powerful as a PS4 or Xbox One. I can't change the font when I'm adding text to a picture. If the Switch can support wired connections, why isn't there an ethernet port? Instead, I have to waste the USB port with an adapter. Only 32 gigabytes of storage? Great, I'm gonna have to spend more money on a micro SD card now. The Joy-Con shoulder buttons don't have analog triggers like the GameCube did. And the same goes for the Pro Controller. Does Nintendo have personal beef with these triggers or something? These sideways shoulder buttons are kind of a pain to push. Why isn't there catchy background music in the Switch menus? I really like the design of the news app, but I have Twitter. I'm never gonna use this. So I can post pictures to Facebook and Twitter, but not MySpace? The Wii U had four USB ports and the Switch has three. Nintendo is slowly becoming Apple. I feel bad for people that have OCD seeing the Switch that has a red and blue Joy-Con. The Nintendo Switch for some reason charges a new MacBook Pro when it's plugged in. What? <laughs> okay, that's actually really funny. Warning, the following video is not over exaggerated. This game is a steaming pile of garbage for the price it's at right now. It's not good, like just, uh. One, two, one, two. This game isn't bundled with a Nintendo Switch when it should be. It's a textbook demo title. But no, instead we have to pay 50 bucks for it. One, two, Switch keeps bossing me around, telling me to look at people in the eyes, be mindful of my surroundings. Stop it. I love how the whole game is just, you know, videos and not like uh, a game. This kind of reminds me of a CDI game, but in HD. It takes no skill to unlock all the games. You just play them. You have to be with at least one person to play this game, but I don't have any friends. What, I could play this with 20 people? There's no way that could possibly be fun. So telephone is clever, but if this is a game for drinking, nobody will be able to hear the phone ring because there'll likely be loud music and a lot of yelling in the background. All the games are only one to two minutes long. There's no depth at all. The tutorials are so long and overdrawn. Some of the tutorials make no sense. Why do I have to say hello when I answer the phone? What if I wanted to say, Pinkle Peach sucks, or my body isn't ready for this garbage. Ball count is honestly so cool and just makes me wish it was more developed. It's too simple. And same with Treasure Chest. It's really fun, but again, way too short. Who on earth came up with the idea behind milking a cow? Okay, shaving? This is actually a mini game. Man, what's next? Brushing my teeth? Taking a shower? Sleeping? Smelling my fingers? Table tennis worked for Wii Play because you could actually see the ball, but this is just... Plain stupid! What? I have no words. You'd have more fun playing baseball using just your imagination running around your house than playing this. Are you actually serious now? 
Okay, I won't lie, this one is kind of fun for some reason, even though it really shouldn't be. Again, playing Sword Fight would be just as fun as playing with only your imagination. The motion controls aren't accurate at all. It's kind of lame having to take turns punching while boxing. I'll just play the Wii Sports version way before this crap. Man, I just feel embarrassed playing Plate Spin. Er, well, honestly, I feel kind of embarrassed buying this game to begin with. The clowns don't even have the white makeup on their faces. So, if you ever wanted to be a beauty star, now is your chance, guys. Not only is Air Guitar the most mind-numbing game in this collection, but the music is too quiet. They should have just combined Quick Draw and Fake Draw into one game. Either Nintendo has gone completely insane, or they miss Harambe. Or they were just really out of ideas. If you're at the main menu hovered over a game, it'll automatically start after a few seconds. That's kind of irritating. Why is the difficulty rated by Chili Peppers? Was there something wrong with just using stars? So for Copy Dance, we're rated on energy after the game is over. And funny enough, I could actually just get an A for, you know, moving my arm while sitting on the couch. What the heck is going on with a point system in Dance Off? Is it how much you move or how graceful you are? It's not clear at all. The songs never change in Copy Dance or Dance Off. It's the same ones over and over. Warning, the following video is over exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and feelings. So be a squid, be a kid and stay fresh, okay? I can't skip Callie and Marie's intro. Please, can't the game just tell me what the stages are in a notification and leave it at that? The amiibo is basically locked content. Good job, Nintendo. You're forced to play the same four maps for four hours. Why can't I play all the game modes at the same time? Sure, private battles exist, but it should be a thing for regular online matches too. Instead of split-screen multiplayer, one person uses the TV and the other uses the gamepad. Wow. We can't even vote on what maps to play. You can't select a random map either. Why is this so limited? I want to play as an Octoling without having to hack. There's no way to swap your weapons or clothing until you leave your lobby, unless you're playing like Squid or Private Battles. But why can't you just do that with every mode? The single player campaign is way too short. There's only eight colors of ink. Why couldn't we get black or red or white? You can't play offline matches with computer players. So if your internet is RIP, <laughs> that's too bad. Playing against a good sniper on Moray Towers. Need I say more? I'm not a kid or a squid, all right? I'm a 23 year old grown man. I got facial hair, I got bills to pay, a place to keep clean, more bills to pay, and taxes. No, 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 no. <laughs> When players disconnect, they aren't replaced with computer players, and losing just one teammate basically means you'll lose. I swear, it's impossible to get an S rank. This game needs to be anti-alias. The ink looks kinda rough. The carbon roller. No, wait, the gold dynamo roller. No, wait, you know, all rollers just piss me off. Look, even this one has temper in the name. Ooh, a washing machine is a weapon? That's actually genius, I won't lie. The skill balancing is non-existent in matchmaking. Sometimes you'll play people that are way too easy and sometimes you'll just get destroyed. The freaking spawn camping is a pain to deal with. That moment when you get squid flopped. So if you disconnect in the middle of a ranked battle, you lose points. Why? There's no voice chat for a game that really needs it. I have to use Skype or Discord to communicate. So those gamepad mini games. They were fun for like five minutes. What are the Inklings even saying? Speak English! When you're about to splat someone and they throw on the bubbler at the last second. Falling into the water kills you. When someone says that the motion controls are really bad. The fact that I used to be one of those people. When your team is too focused on getting kills during turf war, where kills don't really matter. Splatoon started with five stages. Are you kidding me? You can play Turf War with friends, but you can't control if you're on a team with them or not. It takes like three years sometimes for a match to start. You can't highlight weapons or clothes you really like. It makes the inventory look messy. And you can't change your hairstyle or pants. Give them heck? I get Nintendo wanted that E rating, but uh, that's some awkward dialogue. I can't kill those annoying ink muncher guys. Some of the stage elements like the sponges or ink rails were never used in the multiplayer maps. When somebody spawns a kraken before they're about to die. The splatfests are all over and I miss them. Warning, the following video is an April Fool's joke. 
So, I don't even know. Pong. It wasn't the first game ever, so stop believing that nonsense, okay? Where is the color? Black and white is boring. There's not a single piece of music. The only sound effects are some beeps and boops. I can't adjust my sensitivity when I move up and down. I can only play to 11 points? I want to keep going. The numbers are so pixelated. There's only one level? Are you me? Why aren't these textures anti-aliased? And what about the texture filtering? Y'all were lazy with this one. Why can't I play this game online? What are the two blocks fighting over anyway? Who buys lunch? Political beliefs? Who takes out the trash? Man, this would be so much easier if I could just touch the screen and not use a joystick. Even motion controls would be better. Pong really should have been a Nintendo exclusive. It's so Nintendo. You know it's more fun than playing Pong. Ping Pong. No, not in real life. The Wii Play version, obviously. The ball goes through the score. That's so cheap, man. W w wait a minute. The ball isn't even a ball because it's a square. Has Atari never heard of a circle? Because of this game, old people will always associate video games with this. I don't know where to insert my quarter. My computer doesn't seem to have one installed. Warning. The following video is an April Fool's joke. So... Yeah, I mean, I like Pac-Man and all, but you know, he ate too many balls this time. You play the same stage over and over. There's no variety. Why is the Orange Ghost Clyde so freaking stupid? So there's actually cutscenes in this game, but they're pretty lame. There's no dialogue, no plot, it barely tells a story. This game is so hard, I can't make it past the first three or four stages! I can't even save my progress! When I game over, I'm forced to start all over again. Everyone that plays this nowadays eats the big dots only to avoid the ghosts, not realizing that you actually need points to get lives and play well. So the ghosts get a safe space, but Pac-Man doesn't? That's so sexist! How does Pac-Man eat a key? That can't be good for him. When you try to eat a section of dots, but miss one because a ghost gets in the way. Speaking of, how does he eat the ghosts anyway? They're supposed to be made of thin air, right? Doesn't Pac-Man get full after eating all those pack dots? <laughs> I guess he really has a high metabolism then. Oh my god, that woo 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 sound is so annoying. Where are the online leaderboards? Like, seriously. Seriously. I like that there's a two-player mode, but why can't we play at the same time? Taking turns is lame. The first cutscene makes no sense. How the hell did Pac-Man get so big? Why can't I get that big in the actual game? Pac-Man, huh? Our woman inferior or something? Wow. Pac-Man has a total of one power-up. Couldn't Namco have made more? I really wish I could customize Pac-Man's color. The yellow gets really old after a while. Google's version of Pac-Man was always better than this crap. Why can't I just watch an ad instead of paying a quarter every time? Warning. The following video is over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and feelings. This game is pretty sweet, so don't throw a blue shell at me, please. Pink, gold, peach. They don't have amiibo support for every amiibo. Like it matters anyway, all you get is a skin for your me. Yay. While I've never really used Mario Kart TV, apparently everyone that uploads a video to their YouTube channel just gets it claimed by Nintendo. 200cc is a cool idea, but honestly the only tracks it works with is Mute City and Big Blue. The DLC was mostly awesome, but we got some lame characters. Tanuki Mario? Cat Peach? Dry Bowser? Why aren't these skins like Yoshi and Shy Guy have? So that adds up to four Mario characters and four Peach characters. My god. The Koopalings stole slots from fan favorites like Birdo, Petey Piranha, and Diddy Kong. How is the most popular Koopaling, Bowser Jr., not a character with the others? Pink Gold Peach, man. Oh my god. The Balloon Battle is the laziest piece of garbage. There's only Balloon Battle, and the maps are just eight normal tracks. In fact, it's so bad that the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe commercial pretends it didn't exist. Battle mode ups the torque with- Nice try, Nintendo. The internet doesn't forget. I see why there's a time limit on battle mode. It makes sense for online matches. But why can't I turn off the timer and have long, intense games with friends like in Mario Kart 64 or Double Dash? You can use tilt controls. Why? There's Mercedes cars in this game. I mean, yeah, it's free, but like, 
What? I can ride a Yoshi bike with Yoshi. That's kind of creepy for some reason. Okay, they made a bike look like a horse for Link. Why not just add the actual horse instead? Like, come on. The Prancer is basically a pun about horsepower and cars because of the, the horses. Okay, that's actually pretty hilarious. Playing with three or four players drops the frames from 60 FPS to 30 FPS. Mario Kart 8's Rainbow Road is not nearly as exciting as I expected. Mario Kart Wii's and 7's Rainbow Road tracks were way cooler. Yoshi Circuit has now been created three times. It's a cool course, but I mean, it's not that good. And SNES Rainbow Road has been made four times. God, give it a break already. Remember when Toad's Turnpike used to be a hard course? Yeah, me too. So some people have actually complained about Music Park not being revamped like the other retro tracks. The thing is, it's already amazing and it didn't need the changes, so shut up! You can only hold one item at a time. Getting coins in first place really sucks. You can't remap the buttons on your controller if you wanted to. The blooper item will never not be annoying. Why did they bother adding this map on the gamepad? You can add it to the main screen. Well, at least ever since the patch. The item balance is based off of distance. All the heavy characters dominate because they can just push everyone to the side and they're all fast. The me voice clips are so obnoxious. When you play online and hit someone with a shell, but it doesn't register as a hit, like, I get it, you know, lag is a thing, but still. Funky Kong has yet to return as a playable character. Nintendo makes two F-Zero tracks, Captain Falcon as a compatible amiibo, and the Blue Falcon as a cart, but yet there was still no F-Zero game. Baby Park is almost perfect, but there's no Bowser shells flying around. Also, a baby pink gold peach statue can be found here. What the f***? The tornadoes were taken out of dry, dry desert. Also, if you get sucked into the quicksand, that giant piranha head doesn't eat you now. You can't drive up the Peach's castle anymore. The coin picture shows one coin, but you actually get two. There's not a single remake of a retro Bowser castle. And no, Neo Bowser City doesn't count. This game encourages you to drive through thick water to go fast. Don't do that in real life, okay? Invincibility frames don't really exist. You can get hit over and over again by stuff. So you can send messages in between online matches, but they're the most politically correct, safe, and boring messages ever. Like, why would someone care if I'm using tilt controls? No one even does that. So there is voice chat, but only with friends and only between matches. Nice and limited. It's the Nintendo way. Seriously? Pink gold peach Nintendo? Like, how did they even come up with something so random? Is there any reason Pink Gold Peach isn't an alternate skin to Peach? You know, okay, I get it. Her stats are different and shit, but like, come on. She wasted a character slot. And don't tell me that Metal Mario needed a girlfriend, okay? He was fine on his own. He can do his own thing. He don't need a lady, okay? At least Metal Mario was in Mario 64. He had a purpose. But Pink Gold Peach, she just exists for no reason. Warning, the following video is over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and feelings. I love me this game, so just chill and enjoy this 64-bit goodness. Yeah, honestly, this game is so overrated. The drifting is awful and takes so much practice to do well. Why does the word boing pop up when you jump? There's no one-player versus mode. The computers rubber band you, so it's near impossible to stay in first for a whole race. The frame rate is awful when you play with multiple players. Toad's Turnpike. Mirror mode. Enough said. So the Red Shells managed to hit everything except the racers. Apparently, Nintendo replaced Koopa with Wario. Who would want that ugly turd as a character? And Kamek didn't make it into the game either. Now that I think about it, why did we only get eight characters? Diddy Kong Racing has 10, I mean, hello. If you fall off on Yoshi Valley, it takes five years to get back on the track. Also, why can't it tell what place I'm in? Is the game that dumb? You can drive all the way up to Peach's Castle and Royal Wasteway, but you can't go inside and just play Mario 64 instead? So you don't really win anything if you get first in a Grand Prix. Woo, yay, I got a virtual gold medal. Oh, wait a minute, but if you get gold medals for every single cup, the title screen looks different. That's my prize. <laughs> if I don't select a Grand Prix right away, Mario keeps asking if I'm okay? Okay. Yes, I I'm fine. Okay. Yeah, I, I swear I'm okay. okay. 
Dude, I was getting a snack! Chill out! Holy crap, I managed to learn a whole language by the time I finished one lap in Rainbow Road! I can't do that Rainbow Road skip. The advertisements on the billboards aren't even real advertisements. You can't throw triple green or red shells behind you. Does anyone even play Big Donut? Or any of the tracks besides Block Fort? The cows in Moomoo Farm don't even move. Come on, get a move on! Yeah, I I'm sorry. Just unsubscribe now. Trying to jump over that big boulder in Koopa Troopa Beach just isn't worth it. You'll probably just land on the boulder, come to a stop, lose all your time, and look like an idiot. That stupid train in Calamari Desert always gets in my way. You can continuously get hit by items over and over since there's no invincibility frames in this game. Who would even use the speed meter? Nobody cares about that. The item distribution is awful. You can get things like stars, lightning, or triple mushrooms in first or second place. You can't skip that dumb end cutscene showing who got first through third. The characters aren't even 3D models, they're just sprites. Same with the items. Mirror mode isn't played in 150cc, no, it's 100cc. What kind of wusses do they think we are? I can't play battle mode with computer players. If you were holding an item and turned into a mini bomb cart, you'll never be able to use that item. This game is so ugly, it has not aged well. If you turn too much or too quickly, you can actually trip yourself up from that. Why does this exist? When you're about to go over that big jump in Wario Stadium, but nah, someone uses lightning or trips you up and then you fall down and you end up in dead last. When everyone gets hit by lightning, the computer players still go the same speed while you go slower. Those freaking penguins in Sherbet Land. Oh, <laughs> that's so sad. The fourth player's just left all by himself at the ceremony. What? What would... Touching walls can bring you to a stop for no reason. Apparently the ship in DK's Jungle Parkway is a ghost. You can only save time trial data if you have an N64 controller pack. Warning! The following product is provided by Nintendo. Yup, the Big N sent me this game. And now, I'm gonna nitpick this game because of reasons. Why is Pink Gold Peach still in this game? So we got Mario, Baby Mario, Tanuki Mario, Metal Mario, and now Gold Mario! That's five freaking Marios! You don't even unlock any of the characters besides Gold Mario. Wow, what a great and original character to unlock. If you were one of the few people to buy Mario Kart 8 on the Wii U, well, Nintendo wants you to buy basically the same game again for full price. So how is King Boo supposed to push on the brakes? Mario doesn't scream deluxe when shouting out the title of the game. Mario Kart 8! Charles Martinet couldn't say one extra word for you, really? You can't transfer your Mario Kart 8 Wii U data to this game, so you have to get three stars on all the cups all over again and unlock all the car parts. You can't turn off the time limit in battle mode. Only one more amiibo suit? That's so dumb! Why doesn't the helmet at least look good? It's just a helmet! Make it look like the inkling girl's hair or something! Smart steering, huh? I'm certainly not getting smarter with this handicap. Also, there's auto accelerate, just in case you forgot how to push a button. The new info section is cute and all, but I think everyone already knows how to play this game. For a second, I thought the screen confirmed fake item boxes returned, but no. They just fooled me. The online messages you can send to others are still safe and boring. Fire hopping doesn't work anymore. The purple sparks are cool, but you'll almost never use them. I had to rescan all of my amiibo again. If you pause the game and are holding an item, you'll always turn on or off the smart steering, which can be a bit of a nuisance. Trust me, you'll understand once you try it. Thank you, Nintendo, for bringing the Boo item back, but sometimes he spawns like six times in one race. Instead of a character getting sidelined, can't they just be eliminated like the old days? Or turn into a bomb cart? Don't even bother playing this game with the Joy-Con sideways, unless Carpal Tunnel is your thing. Throwing the bombs is controlled differently in bob on blast compared to everything else in the game. Battle Stadium has way too many narrow roads and sadly feels more like an actual track than a battle track. You can still only save six highlights. So they changed the look of the first screen of the menu, but nothing else? I mean, a couple tiny things are different, but they should have just revamped everything. What's with Bowser and the fancy cars? In battle mode, sometimes when I'm just trying to break, I end up doing that 180 degree turn without wanting to. I still can't customize what buttons do what. Battle Course 1. 
Wow, what a clever title. Tilt controls are still a thing. When a race is loading, Nintendo added a little inkling figure to the bottom, but where is my dry bones figure? Hmm? But really though, where is the remake of Block 4, the best battle track of all time? Shouldn't coin runners be called coin drivers? This isn't Sonic R, okay? We're driving. Wouldn't it be nice if the Superhorn could kill a blooper? And worst of all, why can't I play the old battle tracks? I went too far there, didn't I? Warning! The following video is over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and feelings. So don't get all smashed up about this, alright? It's still not melee. The loading screen at the beginning lasts for 10 years. Man, the opening isn't as cool as the one in melee. So much for the announcer yelling Super Smash Bros at the title screen. That moment when Nintendo goes out of their way to make Omega stages for competitive Smash, but the community doesn't use most of them. The menu is so disorganized. Like, why does Smash Tour have its own separate section? Also, just... Smash Tour. Was there any thought put into this terrible Mario Party ripoff? If you were hoping for an adventure mode, Sakurai didn't make it because he didn't want cutscenes to get leaked. Master and Crazy Orders are just variations of regular Smash matches. Unlocking custom moves is stupidly hard. It's completely random if you get a new move. And that's basically why nobody cares about custom moves to begin with. Remember when Classic Mode wasn't just a random mash of Smash matches and it had actual structure? Ah, uh, those were the good days. Okay, let's be real. Playing with more than four players just isn't fun. It's cool for parties and all, but you just push buttons and hope for the best. It took them one year to create Orbital Gate Assault, and it's not that good. It's visually stunning, yes, but actually playing on it? Eh... Uh... Unlocking all the characters is so easy now. I have to pay for the DLC fighters? You mean like actual money? But really, those Mii Fighter costumes are not worth diddly squat. You know what the kids really like? Angry Birds! Hmm, let's just turn target test into that with three fun-filled stages! Cruel Smash is only for the masochistic. Real creative, Nintendo. The next great stage after Battlefield is... Big Battlefield. Ooh, how about Pink Gold Battlefield next, right? Jeez, Nintendo is obsessed with Congo Jungle 64. And same with Temple! We're getting into Mario Kart levels of remakes here. That new Norfair stage has way too much going on. Ugh, the Great Cave Offensive. It's not great, it just offends me, okay? And don't think Palutena's Temple is getting off the hook. This stage isn't as bad as Great Cave Offensive, but it's still way too large. Of all the Brawl stages to bring back, we get 75M, the one that literally nobody likes? Wily Castle and Pyrospear could have been great stages if there was a way to disable those obnoxious bosses. Ugh, the Pac-Land stage. Why do you have to exist and make us all cringe? I like how the Mario Maker stage has slopes, but the original game doesn't. What on earth happened to Stage Builder? How did Nintendo manage to make this more restricted than in Brawl, with the ability to draw stages for crying out loud? I'm almost impressed by how badly they screwed this up. All-Star Mode used to be cool, but now there's like 70,000 fighters and it just feels like running a marathon playing through it. Lucas makes it into Smash again, but still no Mother 3. So Sakurai made an online tournament mode, but not offline? Like Brawl, Special Smash seems so limited in customization. Why can't I f*** around with the menus and make them spin all crazy like in Melee and Brawl? We got a Shovel Knight amiibo. Again, a character from an indie company, but yet no Shovel Knight for Smash. Whenever you save replays, they get deleted after an update. Well, at least when this game did updates. But it still sucked. For glory. It's... It, it, it's not glory. Sorry, honey. Spamming roll dodges isn't gonna help you win, okay? Why is there so many freaking Fire Emblem characters? Wait, who wanted Dark Pit again? Pit even has a Dark Pit costume, and Dark Pit has a Pit costume. Get off your high horse, Sakurai. Captain Falcon isn't hot enough. He needs bigger muscles. The wave dashing has yet to return. I'm really feeling it! Shulk's apparently really feeling something, and that makes me kind of uncomfortable. The final DLC character wasn't Wolf, or K. Rule, or Rayman, or Spongebob, it was Bayonetta. So basically, we got a waifu. Pac-Man's in the game, but there's no costume for Ms. Pac-Man? Nintendo is sexist confirmed. Speaking of sexy, 
Remember when people threw a fit of rage over Zero Suit Samus's costume? Yeah, the ones that pays homage to Metroid Zero Mission and Fusion? Fun times. If you play as Shulk with clothes on, you're uncultured swine. Ooh, a new fighter, Lucina. She looks kind of Oh, uh, she's basically just girl Marth. You can get a gold dean from a Master Ball. The timer and lightning can backfire on you. As if the Ore Club wasn't overpowered enough, it also makes whirlwinds. Don't even get me started on Gust Bellows. Do you hate getting spammed by a ray gun? No worries, the drill does just that, but all in one shot. Who would play this game using just a Wii Remote? Basically, every main Mario character is playable, but Waluigi is still trapped as an assist trophy. The computer players read your inputs. How is that fair at all? Amiibo functionality is... kind of cool? Nah, Nintendo just wanted your monies. Some of these challenges can't be done by humans. Like, I'm expected to play Target Blast, I couldn't fathom that! Nice, low-quality images in your manual, guys. Real nice. I don't want to spectate some laggy match, I want to play! The masterpieces are cool, but I can only play mere minutes of each game. The trophy box makes me feel guilty for not having every single trophy. So this is where half the budget went. You know when a match is loading and those tips show up, but like you don't actually read them? Well, now you can read them in random order! For fun! Yay! Nabbit is a bratty little turd on Mushroom Kingdom U. No, Sakurai, making Peach's Peaches bigger did not improve her final smash. So there's Mushroom Kingdom U, Mario Galaxy, Delfino Plaza, two Mario Kart Mario Circuit tracks, Peach's Castle, Super Mario Maker? A little excessive on the Mario, don't you think? Do not ever do that again. Too many characters have counters. I like how everybody copied Ike's Final Smash. Nintendo made Flat Zone X sound like a new stage when it's really just a combination of the first two. I'd rather not draw you like one of those French girls. I know people didn't like the red shell, but it feels strange to have the green and now blue shell in without the red. Fire! Fire! What is with Fox's Fire! high pitched voice? Fire! Fire! Hey Sakurai, what should we do for Jigglypuff's Final Smash? Uh, make it a. Uh... Dig. Okay. Good lord, that Pac-Man Kirby hat freaks me out. Warning! The following video is over-exaggerated. This game hasn't aged well, but it's still a classic. The following opinions may or may not be accurate to my actual thoughts. I, I. This game is overrated and hasn't aged well. When you're five years old, don't know what you're doing, and you run into the first Goomba. So I just beat Bowser, but instead of a princess, there's this mushroom guy saying she's in another castle. Are you freaking kidding me? This game is way too easy. The jumping mechanics are innovative, but feel clunky. It takes too long to build up speed. You can't go backwards in a level. Mario only has one type of move, and that's jumping. When you get hit with a Fire Flower, you downgrade all the way to Small Mario. And speaking of power-ups, we only have three! What kind of idiot leaves a giant axe near a bridge? Bowser can be killed with fireballs, but yet breathes fire. Logic. I have never seen anyone swim like Mario does. What is he doing? Also, fireballs underwater. Pretty sure that doesn't work. Lekitu is so obnoxious. Since when were the Hammer Bros so difficult to kill? Ugh, like for this one! I swear, it's impossible to not get hit unless you're Fire Mario. If you lose all your lives, you go all the way back to the beginning. So if you grab a Fire Flower as Small Mario, you only turn into Big Mario. Buzzy Beetles are like roaches! You can't kill them. World 8-4 gives you no clues as of what pipes you're supposed to go down. Timing those stupid spring jumps is a pain. The multiplayer isn't really multiplayer, you just take turns. And the final boss is nothing special, it's just Bowser again with the stupid hammers. There's basically like four or five songs in the game, and that's it. According to the manual, all the bricks have toads inside of them. That quickly got disturbing. Why does this game have to freeze when Mario is getting a power-up? I've never understood that. Those flying cheap jeeps are always random and annoying. Honestly, do the points even mean anything? It's not like this is an arcade game. A lot of the backdrops and themes are the same. There's little variety. Reusing levels again. Very classic, Nintendo. There's no variety in the fireworks. They all look the same. Since when did touching the top of the flagpole get so hard? Oh, oh, right, right. The newer games spoil you. Yeah, I forgot about that. Those terrifying jumps at the end of 8-3. Most of the worlds aren't too bad, but then there's World 8. 
I don't like World 8. The warp zones are cool, but way too game-breaking. I can't do that glitch to get to World Minus 1. The time isn't accurate to real-life time. Okay, I went through all of this crap to save Princess Toadstool, and she's not even that cute. She's all yours, Bowser. Warning! The following video is over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and feelings. So, let's all just hold hands and glide on, alright? Why wasn't this game called Mario Kart 3DS? Or something cool instead of just a number? Where is the single player versus mode? Is it just me, or do at least 5,000 blue shells spawn per race? Like, why is the item distribution always so crappy? So Waluigi Stadium is a playable stage, but not Waluigi? What? The 3D actually works well, but there's really no reason to have it. I have my suspicions that Metal Mario inspired a certain character who we do not speak of. It takes 10 million years to unlock all the gold parts. They got rid of the motorcycles for seemingly no reason. Why is Wiggler a character? I mean, it's cool to have something new, but just the fact that they had to give him gloves just so he could drive says it all. And he doesn't even have hands anyway. What were they thinking? So there's actually a first person mode, but you're forced to use tilt controls to access it. Also, tilt controls. I can only hold 10 coins? Why not 15? or 20, or 10,000. It kind of sucks playing the DS courses and not being able to drift the same way as Mario Kart DS. It just doesn't feel right. The blue shell doesn't have wings, therefore it shouldn't be able to fly on its own. So that Super Leaf item, it makes you look real stupid. And it should have been a battle mode exclusive item anyway. You normally don't want this thing in actual races. Oh, the lucky seven, huh? More like we're out of ideas seven. Rosalina doesn't have her Luma? What is this madness? The Mii characters are stuck in middle class and aren't customizable like in Mario Kart Wii. And yes, the Mii sound effects are so obnoxious. If you get three stars for every cup, you win nothing from that. There's a ton of car and wheel parts, but almost nothing for the gliders. Not gonna lie, those giant toad balloons and toad circuits are really creepy looking. You can't look backwards like in Mario Kart Wii. Some of the names of the courses are different in comparison to the American and European versions for seemingly no reason. I should be able to trick off this giant pipe in Wario Shipyard, but I can't. Oh, sorry, Wario's Galeom, however the hell- How do you even pronounce that? Why is Lekitu a character? I mean, it's kind of cool, but he already has a role in the actual race. And yeah, okay, his shell is a different color, but it still just doesn't seem right. If you're holding items after falling, you lose those items and three coins. It's cool that you can drive over some of the crowd seats in Luigi Raceway, but it's a million times slower. The cars in Coconut Mall still piss me off, and Daisy is still annoying to this day. <laughs> Did Rosalina just give us the duck face? <laughs> Ugh. Lekitu honestly sounds like Ai Ai from Super Monkey Ball, but why? I can't drive through the tunnel anymore in Calamari Desert. When you get hit by things, it feels like forever until you can start driving again. Metal Mario doesn't even have fingers, it's just terrifying metal fists. Not only are we forced to have a time limit in Balloon Battle and Coin Runners, but we can't even choose how long that duration is. And we can't pick how many rounds we want to play, it's just four every time. Also, where is Block Fort? Every Mario Kart game should have Block Fort, honestly. Yeah, Wario's a dick. Warning! The following video is over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and feelings. So go bananas and have a ball with this, aight? I have to manually turn on autosave? What is this, the 1980s? That butt shake offended me. The UI is pretty bad. The timer, lives, and score do not need to be that freaking large on the screen. The bonus floors for each difficulty level repeat themselves. The only difference is the time limit. So to unlock Master Mode, I have to play through all 50 stages on Expert without getting a game over? That is so sadistic, AV! When you're playing with a friend and after they finish a stage, they don't mash the A button so it can be your turn faster. That same friend also forgetting to hold A before a stage begins. Who in their right minds would even go for this bunch of bananas? Honestly, half of this game is learning how and when the camera moves on its own. Ugh, shut up, baby! It takes an eternity to unlock all the minigames! When you get hit by a letter in the credits, it makes you feel like total crap. Every banana has a Dole logo on it. Sellouts confirmed. 
While I like the innovation of adding your name by rolling around in the ball, it's really uncalled for. Also, I can only add three characters. Really now? Okay, I kind of see why I'm not allowed to get play points in multiplayer, but they should have worked around that. Why didn't they set it so every player gets less play points than normal so we could unlock everything with friends? Beginner 1, you go straight. Advanced 1, you go straight with a bump. What a game changer. The bumpers are the worst things ever. Expert 7, Expert 9 too. Just look at this mess. And we haven't even talked about the master stages yet. Speak of the devil, Master 3 would be just as difficult if you were blindfolded. Yep. They just want us to hate this game. I'm sure of it. You know what would be easier to do instead of playing Master 9? Being forced to pick up one grain of sand in the desert while wearing boxing gloves, being attacked by fire ants, and with an earthquake shaking the ground all while you're completely blind and stuck in a wheelchair. Screw this level. I get a heart attack when the game tells me to hurry up. These developers are the biggest trolls. Oh yeah, let's throw tons of bananas on these platforms that are basically impossible to reach. Haha! <laughs> Whatever food that is on the menu, it looks disgusting. You know, why is it always monkeys trapped in balls anyway? We're such dicks to monkeys! We sent one to space to die, we've used them for psychology experiments, what is wrong with us? Usually, I can get through all of Advance without losing a life, but then the last stage appears and it's all over. And to think that a harder version exists, I have no words to just look at this! It really is impossible to collect every banana for this bonus stage. A lot of the advanced and expert stages are just rehashes that change almost nothing to make it harder. The camera actually makes me want to die for this one. And this stage is deceivingly difficult. Welcome to Tightrope Walking Simulator. Fun, right? The minimap in the corner is rarely helpful. And they said penguins couldn't fly. The camera is extra stupid for this level and I really don't know why. Looking back, the difficulty progression is pretty screwed up. Like, Expert 37 is a cakewalk, but I have to practice Expert 7 for hours on end. Why does the announcer say party game and mini game like it's a question? Yeah, that is what I want to do. Thanks. And also, why aren't the party and mini games combined into one place? It seems dumb to separate them. You can only pass this stage if you cheat in some form or another. The only items you can throw backwards in Monkey Race is the bananas. No, stop giving me the freaking speed boost that just makes me go too fast and flies off the track. If you ever wanted to throw a monkey into the water, then enclose him in a ball which is also full of water so he'll drown to death, monkey target is for you. Those poor monkeys being smacked around on that billiard table. So uncalled for. The bowling pin physics are something else. Say hello to the dumbest mini golf course I've ever seen. Warning. The following video is over exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and feelings, so relax and just have a smashing time, okay mate? It's not Melee, even though that game didn't exist yet. Besides classic mode, target test, and board the platforms, there's really nothing else to do in single player. Every character is ugly and has blocks for hands. What? Jigglypuff? But who asked for her? Why not someone like Charizard or Mewtwo? I mean, look what she did! She left graffiti all over this friggin' wall! The mechanics are incredibly slow in this game. Where is the beast sideways attack? Everyone's all about Mew showing up in the Pokeball, but literally nothing happens from it. Ledge grabbing is harder than it needs to be. Classic mode has zero variety. I like consistency, but couldn't they have swapped out the giant or team characters every once in a while? You can't turn off tap jump. Ness's grab is so overpowered, it's not even funny. Whenever you finish a bonus stage, the voice actor is different compared to the rest of the game. What happened to the original guy? Did he just not show up to record one day? It's easy to forget how powerful the Fire Flower is. A player can get stuck in its flames almost infinitely. Why does Metal Mario take 10 million thousand bajillion hits to kill? Also, why can't we unlock the Metal Mario stage, or Battlefield, or Final Destination? The stages are right there, let's use them for multiplayer, I mean, come on! I shouldn't have to hack my game just to play the freaking. Fight me all you want, Master Hand, but do you really gotta slap me in the face? That's just disrespectful. They spell Charles Martinet's name wrong in the credits. You know, the guy that voices freaking Mario? How dare they make that mistake? It looks like DK is pulling his arm out of socket while charging up his punch. Ugh. That glowing white door in Saffron City has left me scarred for life. 
The Pokemon and items are just sprites and not 3D models. You can't throw a box up or at the ground. Did they really have to show DK's butt in such great detail? I definitely can't tell that those leaves are textures. Nope. Captain Falcon doesn't have the knee of justice. Yeah. And where is the F-Zero stage? I mean, come on. Even Captain Falcon knows he's number one, so give him some respect. Oh, right, of course. Mario has two stages. That figures, doesn't it? When Kirby steals DK's power and charges up a punch, one of his arms goes into his head like a giant pimple. And that's just nasty, man. I have to unlock the item switch in sound test options? What is, what, why? Imagine doing something like that for, I don't know, Call of Duty. Okay, imagine if you had to unlock the ability to change your controls, okay? Change your controls, adjust your settings. Doesn't that sound like fun? Is there any reason for this cloud to exist? Even though there's only 12 characters, Luigi is basically a clone of Mario. Even his voice clips are just a higher pitched version of Mario's. Every time I try to speedrun race to the finish and think I can avoid all attacks and obstacles, it never happens. The POW blocks are so broken, so warping between the pipes is cool, but having one spawn in a death pit? Come on, Sakurai! All the Yoshi team does is jump around and run away. Can they just stand still for me? I want to know what that sign says in Peach's castle, but there's no way to read it. What? I didn't get a Metal Mario power-up? Come on! Why does Pikachu randomly have stats in the description for his data, yet the rest of the characters, including Jigglypuff, have normal biographies? No, Kirby, don't dab, stop! Ow. Warning, the following video is over-exaggerated, and the following product is provided by Nintendo. So yeah, this game is silly, and the name is bland like an expired saltine cracker. Honestly, what kind of name is ARMS? What's the sequel gonna be called? Legs? Torso? Sorry, but I can't play this with motion controls, even with hours of practice. Maybe they'll become ideal over time, but I don't like them. The fact that I even feel the need to apologize about my preference of control method. What a first world problem. So you can punch and throw. That's it. Why can't I do a kick? Or taunt? Or hip thrust? The minigames are a nice touch, but they'll probably lose their appeal quickly. Why can't I move the camera? You know, actually being able to move it forward or back would be nice. Will you all stop perving out on Min Min and Twintel? Like, really now? Okay, I'm not gonna lie, Twintel does got that booty. Also, Twintel has a booty for basically no reason. I guess the devs just want to distract us from playing? Or sell more copies? Or both? Where is Little Mac? He better be a part of that free DLC we're getting. Playing this game with the Joy-Con sideways is somehow worse than playing Smash Bros with a Wii remote. I like how the first screen you see in ARMS is to put on the Joy-Con straps, but you don't even use those buttons. Yeah, it's for a better grip or whatever, but really, do you actually want to put those things on your Joy-Cons again after the first time? That's what I thought. Skillshot is going to be one of those games that ruins friendships. One of the stages is a soup bowl? What am I doing with my life? You can't change your button inputs. Spring Man? Ribbon Girl? Real creative names, guys. Bite's arm can apparently extend infinitely, and that's terrifying. The game actually calls Helix a man in quotations. This isn't a man, okay? It's Flubber 2.0. Yo, can I get my hands on that hairspray that Springman uses? I mean, just look at that hairdo. It's too gnarly, man. The slow-mo in the replays isn't as crispy smooth as it is in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. How did the arms not get tangled up? That's a serious question, guys. When you fight someone that spams throwing. Hey, look, it's D.Va from Overwatch. Those freaking cars always get in my way. Nothing is more annoying than twin tail freezing time every five seconds. What's the point of making the alt costume swaps a secret? Imagine if it was a secret to swap costumes in Smash Bros. Three-way fights have no balance. Helix's voice is so obnoxious. There are way too many puns in arms. So there's a total of four items in the game. That's it? Springman's logo is basically just Superman's logo, but upside down. Why do the team players have to be attached by some string? Warning! The following video is over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and feelings, so don't throw bananas at me, pretty please? Yeah. 
Okay, great. Diddy Kong has his own game, but they couldn't include Donkey Kong? How did Wizpig not see that log in front of him? I like how Conker from Conker's Bad Fur Day made it into an E-rated game. Sure, get those kitties interested in the cute little squirrel only to find out how foul he really is. Trying to use the hovercraft, it's not fun on water or land. So to break this game, let go of acceleration before a speed pad and you get a huge boost. Congratulations, you'll be Diddy Kong racing with no effort. Actually, just kidding. You need to do this if you want any chance against both Wizpig fights and the final space tracks. Like, seriously, good freaking luck beating this game. Why can't I do little jumpy jumps? It's so cool that you can upgrade the items, but the third upgrade for the red balloons is kind of a downgrade. You go from a lock-on rocket to just firing 10 normal rockets. Does anyone even like the yellow balloons? They're barely useful for anything. Jungle Falls doesn't really look like a jungle. It's more or less another canyon level. Who is even supposed to find this balloon? Like, seriously? There's this warning message in Hot Top Volcano, but I don't know why. What, to watch for the giant hole I have to fly through? Thanks for the heads up, I guess. The dinosaurs look so fugly in this game. Ugh, the silver coin challenges. Go for it! Thanks, that was kind of my plan already. You can't throw the rockets behind you. Why would anyone bother with the speedometer over the map? So when I'm challenged to a race against Taj, it actually means I'm forced beyond my will to race him. Oh god, I need a save space, please. Unlocking TT is the biggest pain in the ass. Why am I bouncing off ice? Or is this like jello or... Is there any good reason Bluey the Walrus has a bow tie on? All the bosses have no personality when they really should. Don't boost through the air in the car unless losing total control is your kind of thing. The silver coins in Frosty Village are so spread out. That moment when you ram into a tree and lose all your speed. Good lord, the second walrus race! I think he's on cocaine. So in this game, you gotta get a bunch of keys to unlock stuff. One of the keys is hiding in some mountains, another inside the alcove of an island, and another is literally on top of a castle. This is a racing game, not The Legend of Zelda. Don't bother taking that alternate route up the ship. Not unless you want to waste time. Ugh, stop putting me in bubbles, bubbler. Don't make me bubble you. What? He started flying before the race started. Hey, he's cheating. Come on. Greenwood Village. Silver coins. It speaks for itself. This banana collecting battle mode is really unique, but I can only hold two bananas at a time before putting them in my chest. I should be able to hold as many as I want. What kind of name is Drumstick anyway? It's really stupid. Warning! The following video is over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and feels, because this is my favorite Mario Kart game. But I'll find something to whine about, oh yes. Say hello to the most boring racetrack of all time, Figure 8 Circuit. And Yoshi Falls isn't any better. Okay, there's like a waterfall, and some bridges, but... Ugh. Making an emblem is really cool, but there's only 15 colors to work with. Also, you'll almost never see your emblem because it's too tiny or in front of the cart. Remember when Baby Park was really fun in Double Dash? Well, the remake sucks. Well, there's freaking five laps, no Bowser shells flying around, it's boring! Those people that think snaking is bad, I'd rather that than be forced to wait for my drift to build up. Why on earth is an excavator a cart? Yes, it's unique, but what the hell? And why a tank? I mean, it's really cool, it's my favorite, but why? They took out the second shortcut in Yoshi's Circuit. Who asked for Rob as a character? Also, why is a pair of legs a freaking cart? What were you all smoking when coming up with these designs? Where is our lord and savior Legatu? Ugh, get away from me, DK. Honestly, this whole game is so blocky and ugly nowadays. Like, holy crap, man. Why is there an item stat? What's that even supposed to mean? Speaking of items, why are they 2D sprites again? Well, okay, the fake item box and blue shell are in 3D, but the rest should have been too. This was the first game to introduce the blooper, the one item that literally nobody likes and hasn't left us since. You can't see everyone's times after a race anymore. What, why did I lose my items by running into that car? That overpowered item box on DK Pass that always gives you stars or triple mushrooms. I like how the crowd is literally just dots. Who would even bother with this alternate map on the bottom screen when the default one is as helpful as can be? So one of the methods to blow up balloons is the blow into the mic. Could this be more cheesy? You want to know why the Poltergeister model numbers jump from 3,000 to 5,000? Because the 4,000 model is a goddamn cart. What is with Luigi and Data? 
Does he miss his dad or something? There's only one song for every battle mode track. I like how there's two courses called Luigi Circuit. Ah, Nintendo, you're so good at naming things. Where are the mushroom cars that give you free mushrooms? Why did they get rid of that random sidewalk place that nobody used? And why can't I drive on top of the bridge anymore? God, they took everything out of this track. Every battle track stage is awesome except Tart Top. Why you gotta ruin this tart top? Oh cool, there's some shines. Just another game reminding me that there has yet to be a sequel to Mario Sunshine. Hmm. The DS track is cool and all, but there should be grooves of elevation where the buttons are. Will you stop taking all my friggin' coins? <laughs> this boss is easy, man. Too easy. What? He jumps? Every time you're about to grab that last coin, the Chain Chomp hits you. And this Chain Chomp is cheating. He started before the race began. And for heaven's sakes, what drugs is that Wiggler on to move so quickly? Warning, the following video is over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and feelings. So don't mistake a poison mushroom for a normal one, okay? Apparently, American gamers weren't good enough to play the real sequel to Super Mario Bros, so instead we got a reskin of Doki Doki Panic. So... this game is way harder than it needs to be. Now I'm glad I stayed in Japan. Ooh, what's that new mushroom? What? It kills you? I love how sitting at the title screen ends with Mario killing himself. The jumping mechanics still feel pretty clunky. I like that Luigi controls differently than Mario, but he's even more annoying to use. Sure, he jumps higher, but it takes even longer to build up speed and slow down. The plot hasn't changed at all. Peach is captured and Mario must save her. Why is it so difficult to grab this mushroom? They didn't bother updating the graphics at all. There's no new music, not even remixes. And you still can't walk backwards in a level. Why didn't they fix any of the first game's problems? It shouldn't be impossible to grab this fire flower. The platforms with the mushrooms look so tacky. Did some high schooler hack in these textures? You thought the Hammer Bros were bad in the first game? Well, now they chase after you. This warp only takes me to World 2? That's lame. Why do the springs launch you 50 million feet in the air? So you see this jump? Yeah, it looks impossible, right? Well, here's what you gotta do. You gotta find two invisible blocks to get across. Ugh. And how do you make this jump? I've been trying for like three years and I'm, I'm having no- Oh. Oh. Oh, of course. Of course that's all it is. What? There's warp zones that take you back levels? <laughs> oh great, now I'm forced to use enemies to make jumps. Good level design. And that's the thing, man. The level design overall is random and unorthodox. Passing half these stages requires a lot of trial and error. Instead of expanding on the two-player mode, they just cut it out altogether. Could these Lekitus possibly be any more obnoxious? The freaking win! The one big new future that we didn't need or want. They couldn't add a blue background to indicate this is a water section? Or is this supposed to be like a flooded castle? To get to World 9, you have to play through the whole game without using warps. And that's fine, you know, just make us suffer as much along as possible. Mm -hmm. What is this psychedelic nightmare? God, the colors look awful. I really hate when you have to take certain paths in a castle to make progress. They're so annoying to figure out. And I gotta say, I'm really not a fan of the red piranha plants. So three out of the four levels in World 9 are water ones. Okay. World C3. You got endless wind, endless springs, and the level just never seems to end. This final jump really sucks. Pieces page with Kingdom Save, Harut to Mario, our only hero. Th that is not a good sounding rhyme, guys. It sounds terrible. I like how half this level has literally no enemies or obstacles to worry about. Am I the only one that really hates bloopers outside of the water? Do you want to know how to unlock worlds A through D? You have to beat this game eight times, count them eight times, without using any warps. Well, that tops a bunny turd ball on this shit Sunday. And you want to know why that sucks so much? Because when you first hear about this game, you're just like, oh boy, I love the original, so this has to be fun. And then you start playing it, and after 10 minutes has passed, you realize that it's basically the same game with frustrating levels, unimproved mechanics, and one new power-up that just kills you. What a slap in the face. So here's the deal, guys. Don't trust this game. Don't emulate it. Don't search for it. Don't mess with it. Don't take it on a date. Don't feed it. Don't clean it. Don't believe in it. And just, just, just don't play it. The following video is over-exaggerated. 
I love fishing for my best friend Froggy. Do you know where he is? I'm going to go find him. Bye! It's a Sonic game. The graphics haven't aged well. Big the Cat. Why does Sonic Adventure have people in it? I don't care about them. This game takes itself way too seriously. The menus look so tacky. Yeah, let's just slap the game logo on as the background and call it a day. Also, it looks like this book is cursing. The background song restarts every time you go to a new sub menu, which is kind of annoying. Are these mannequins or are they supposed to be real people? This camera is so janky and moves at the most awkward times. That's Eggman! I wonder what happened to Sonic? What the hell just happened? Sonic! Wake up! Uh... <laughs> I was on a snooze cruise, I guess. Good thing you're okay. Uh, I didn't know this was a horror game. Why am I racing Sonic to get an emerald? I thought we were on a team. Froggy? The run cycles look ridiculous for most of the characters. It's pretty obvious that the whale isn't going to hit us. Nobody forecast a storm or anything. What kind of music is this? So the DX version updated the textures, but none of the animations or, well, really anything else. Sonic shower scenes. All the boss fights are so easy. Now, now, calm down. When you whistle in the chow garden with Amy, it reveals her panties. Ugh, come on, man, she's like 12. Why does Tails even bother to follow me? He doesn't understand fast like Sonic. I always feel like this game is gonna break on me. You know, whenever I think Sonic, I always imagine myself going on a treasure hunt. So, I guess I'm just racing myself? I love riding on top of cars. The pinball section is a pain in the hiney. Uh-huh, hi, I'm Sonic, and I'd like to deposit some rings. Give them to me. Hey there, Tails. Did you find the tornado too? Never mind that. Get up and follow me. Why are these pirates exploding? Are they kamikazes? It's so unclear where you need to go sometimes. Thank God for those random red orbs. The Amy stages would be a nice change if the cameras weren't even worse for her levels. I think you should be his bodyguard a little while. What? Who is gonna think of looking in between some buildings for this ice key? Good God, the controls are sensitive for this plane. Controlling Sonic feels really clunky. Red Mountain's camera makes me red with anger. Is that it? The f just happened? Amy only has like three main stages. Why not just blend her stages with another character's? Actually, every campaign is really short except for Sonic's. <sighs> Screw this stupid puzzle. Could Big possibly sound any more obnoxious? And honestly, who the hell is best friends with a frog? That's kind of sad, dude. Big moves so slow, pick it up! Big's upgrades are pretty lame. A lore? A life raft? How about some Sonic shoes so he can move a bit faster? The controller serves to unify the chaos. <gasps> the seven emeralds can change our thoughts. Sonic never seems to care when he dies. He's just like, no. This dude isn't scary at all. Amy can just smack him with the hammer whenever she wants. You can't skip the credits for any of the character stories. God, and there's missions as well? No thanks. I just only have a step back. Warning! The following video is over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and views. So don't believe in that blast processing ad campaign, all right? Sonic really doesn't look like a hedgehog. Why is he so sassy? 
You aren't being cool, dude. I can't do a spin dash. Some of the levels go way too fast, and some of the levels go way too slow. Have you ever wondered what LSD was like? Well, just play one of the special stages in Sonic 1, and you good. When you're going all super quick and fast and speedy, and then a freaking spring just comes out of nowhere and pushes you backwards. I know this is just a video game, but why do you bust open a computer to get rings? Is this supposed to be like foreshadowing Amazon and their ability to deliver goods at the speed of quick? Yeah, yeah, this boss is iconic, but holy crap is he easy. Who would lose to this? Oh great, a never ending waterfall, just what I wanted. Wait, Dr. Robotnik was capturing little animals? What an asshole! God, you move so freaking slow in the water! The Marble Zone levels may not look hard, but they are. If you happen to miss this jump, well, that's just too bad. You're dead. If you get a game over, you have to start from the very beginning. I freaking hate those stupid caterpillars. I'm always scared I'm not gonna hit their heads since every other part of their body hurts me. So Robotnik goes from being completely burnt from his ship to totally fine. The hell? There are so many bottomless pits. Trying to get the Chaos Emeralds can be so annoying sometimes. Oh boy, jumping from block to block to block to block sure is fun. The Labyrinth Zone. <sighs> This is the only game franchise where drowning is terrifying and gives me nightmares. This has to be the most annoying boss fight of all time. As this game goes on, the enemies get more and more obnoxious. There's only six worlds? Come on, Mario had eight in his first game on the NES. Step it up, Sega. What is with these frame-perfect jumps? The level design just gets worse and worse. If you beat the game and don't get all the Chaos Emeralds, Robotnik straight up taunts you and says to try again. If you have like 80 rings and get hit by something, only 20 rings fly away instead of all 80. So where did those extra 60 go, huh? So how am I supposed to get this life again? Oh great, power sneakers. As if this game wasn't frantic enough. When you look up or crouch with Sonic, the screen moves with you. Sometimes this can be helpful, but it's usually just irritating. So there's only six Chaos Emeralds instead of the usual seven, which means we never get supersonic. What was the point of collecting the Emeralds then? To get the good ending? This isn't a good ending, this is just a ripoff. Warning! The following video is over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and feelings. So don't worry if you're Team Pearl or Team Marina. It's just whatever, okay? Splatoon 2? More like Splatoon 1.5. Does anyone even like Pearl? Like, honestly, Marina for the win. There's still only the girl or boy option, but there's 9 billion genders. Like, come on, Nintendo. Hey, look, an emo hairstyle. I'm yet again forced to play the tutorial. So Splatoon 2 kind of has voice chat, but you have to use their phone app and you can't lock your screen or leave the app while using it. Back to Discord. Yes! They changed the jump button to B when it used to be X in the first game. This is why customizable control should be a thing. I gotta relearn this now. If your internet sucks, you can't play most of this game. You gotta love how the single player campaign works exactly the same as Splatoon 1's with no real improvements whatsoever. One of the new enemies freaking pukes out these pink sponge things. Ugh, that's disgusting. The puns are out of control. Please make it stop. Aw, I can't shoot Marie. What a party pooper. When you get spammed with curl bombs and you're trapped in a corner. Hey look, it's Sonic Heroes. I'm not a fan of the boxes that take 10 million hits to destroy. It just slows down the game. So the amiibo will save your loadout and give you some exclusive outfits, and that's it. What's even the point? I like this Octo Samurai dude, but why is he on a unicycle? Like, what kind of idiot would fight someone on a one-wheeled bike? Instead of bringing back the Flood, we get the Inkjet instead. Like, come on, what a missed opportunity. Maybe it wasn't a good idea to let people draw again. So the Splat Dooley is allowed to do this roll attack, which is cool, but it's the same button as Jump. They really couldn't have mapped the roll to another button. Also, the boss fights are only three hits again, outside the final boss. Ugh, new Super Mario Bros, what have you done to this industry? If you lose all three lives, the game doesn't tell you game over. No, it says freaking rip. Yeah, you're flat out dead. Rest in goddamn peace. You're not coming back. You're as good as done. Say goodbye. Level 19, man. It's such an obnoxious level. Floaty fun, more like floaty fun. When you lose a match, it looks like the Inkling is trying to take a poop. What the heck? Oh great, a discount guitar hero. That series died years ago. Let it go, game industry. Why is Salmon Run only free to play sometimes? 
That's so sad. This game mode is genuinely the most fun I've had in a long time, and it really sucks we can't play it whenever we want. You still can't pick your maps in multiplayer matches. There's still no random map option either. Good job, Nintendo, for including four game modes at launch, but they're all the same ones, and you still can't play them all at any time. They cycle every two hours. You've got to be kidding me. Why can't the glitter from the single player be in the other game modes too? That moment when you're given the worst weapon in Salmon Run. You can't swap out weapons in between matches. It's cool that all the specials are new, but I miss the Kraken and Ink Strike. Splat in peace, my good old pals. Where is the local split-screen multiplayer? And why can't I just play ranked modes with friends online? Like, that's so ridiculous. Like, geez, come on, Nintendo. Why do you always bot your online? When you win a match, why is there paint in the Inkling's teeth? Ugh. 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 This game does so much right, but it also does so much wrong at the same time. If Splatoon 2 wasn't so freaking addicting, I would be even more triggered than I already am. Warning! The following video is over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my true thoughts and feelings. Let's all just be edgy edgelords like a big fam. Sound good? Like Sonic Adventure 1, this game takes itself way too seriously. Let's be real, this is the only good stage in the entire game. Ugh. Not Oma Chow. Oh yay, Shadow the Edgelord makes his debut. Playing SA2 is habit forming, don't turn off. Uh, do you wanna pay my electric bill, Sega? As awesome as this scene looks, we all know the truck isn't gonna hit Sonic anyway. And besides, you can just push the truck back uphill by homing on it. Would recommend invincibility first though. You know guys, let's be real for a second. This boss fight is just so intricate and thought provoking and just complex, the details. It's absolutely beautiful. I mean, Sonic Team really outdid themselves here. Oh my goodness gracious. There's an awkward sexual tension between Knuckles and Rouge. Also, why does Rouge have such large tatas? These swimming controls are just awful. The emerald pieces will only signal off one at a time, so you could be missing other emeralds, but you wouldn't know it. Gotta love how the background is literally just a JPEG picture of some city. Like, you know, I understand technology was limited back then, but holy crap does it look bad. You go, but the next time we meet, you won't be so lucky. Once again, the sound mixing is terrible for the cutscenes. Knuckles and Rouge move way too fast for stages where you're supposed to take your time and explore. Listening to Knuckles pet chow is a little disturbing. Now there, yours. I take that back, Eggman is worse. There is no strategy for the Tails and Eggman stages. You just walk forward and win. Is everyone in this game really this stupid? Okay, seriously, these one-on-one -on -one fights between Sonic and Shadow just feel so awkward. Like, when you hit them, there's no satisfying pow sound effect. They just blank and say a catchphrase. Why on earth is there rap music in a Sonic game? The driving stages are just torture. You just go forward with no obstacles or anything interesting. You can get this boost from driving, but there's no cool effects when that happens. You just go faster. Okay, honestly, all you hear in these stages are... If you don't like your chow, well, you can tell it to f off and leave it in the daycare for forever. Did you also know that Sonic is a sellout? Well, he is. His own shoes are a product placement for soap. Good job. Wait for me, okay, Sonic? I'm on my way. I am reading off a script too, but you would never know. The camera here is awful. It's so jittery and it just does whatever it wants. It's so easy to fall off of a golem's back. How on earth does Eggman jump without moving his knees first? Man, do I hate this level. I never know where I'm supposed to go, and the freaking doors opening and closing just pisses me off. Oh, Sonic! I thought I'd never see you again! Lord have mercy! I can't take the stupidity any longer! Who would feed cute little chow vials that look like they're filled with chemicals and sh**? You know how for the shooting stages, you just have to shoot all the things and you're good to go? Well, without warning, you can't shoot these doors or you blast to the vacuum in space and die. There is no good reason for this stage to be the size of Jupiter. Who am I fighting here? Knuckles or the camera? Anyone else feel like half this game is just watching things happen and not actually being in control? Sometimes when I'm trying to do a light dash, I'll start building speed for a spin dash because both moves are mapped to the same button when they shouldn't be. This constantly changing gravity thing really doesn't work well. As if the treasure hunting stages weren't annoying enough, for security hall, you have to complete it in less than five minutes. Did you see it? Where is it now? If I tell you, will you marry me? 
so when you get to the third lap, the timer seems to freeze at 99 seconds, but later on it'll start counting down. That means there was no effort in adding an extra digit. That is so sad. Come on, why on earth are the clues words randomly scrambled? Like, as this stage isn't already annoying enough, you know, at this point, just make everything invisible, okay? Everything's just invisible. Um, let's see. Oh, also, make the controls inverted, and, uh, make sure we can only play with our toes or we can't get an A rank, okay? Ugh. So, yeah. Mad Space literally drives me mad. Now that I think about it, why is Tails in a mech suit anyway? Wouldn't it just be easier and more efficient to fly around in his plane instead? You wouldn't believe how many times I'm just moving forward and an enemy drops down in front of me. That's real fair. The real villain is this creepy little girl. Whatever you do, just don't look into her eyes. So, how did you know it wasn't the real one? <laughs> because you just told me, Fox Boy. In order to collect the final stage in the game, you have to collect all 180 emblems. That's right, you got 100% this game. And if you somehow manage to do that, what do you get for all of your hard work and effort? Frickin' Green Hill Zone! The one Sonic stage that's been recreated in every other Sonic game in existence. Hallelujah! Warning! The following video is over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and feels. So let's all enjoy Smash on the go before the Switch version comes out. We cool? It's not Melee! I can't use the Smash Bros controller. Smash for 3DS. What a boring name. What about something like Smash Bros Ultimate or Smash Bros Duel? Because dual screens? Eh? Remember playing the hell out of this game and then the Wii U version came out and you forgot this existed? Yeah, same here. There's no cool opening or anything like that. The announcer doesn't shout out Super Smash Bros. There's no way to use a C-Stick unless you bought a new Nintendo 3DS, but I can't afford that. Also, if you don't have a new Nintendo 3DS, you can't use Amiibo without an NFC reader. There goes another 30 bucks. Oh wait, who cares about the Amiibo? All that happens is you train a computer player and that's it. Why can't we play Smash Run online? Yeah, there's local play, but this begs for online functionality. Including the DLC, there are seven Mario stages in this game. You think that might be a tad bit excessive? Even with a bigger screen, it's hard to see the characters sometimes. The loading screen takes an eternity. Did you know there's actually 3D in this game? Huh. You can't turn the stage hazards off. There's some really cool stages that I wish were in the Wii U version. Like, why is Rainbow Road on the 3DS? The single player feels really lacking without an adventure mode. So the customized characters are allowed in classic mode, but not all-star. This game is why the Ice Climbers didn't return as characters. Do you like laggy online matches? Mmm, cause that's what you go and get, man. Ugh, I didn't want to be reminded of new Super Mario Bros. 2. You can't toggle around with the screen like in Melee or Brawl. Like, that was so much fun, man. As sexy as Captain Falcon is, it's really hard to rock a boner with the awful resolution. What is this Street Smash thing? Okay, cool, Nintendo, you tried to innovate or whatever. This, this is not, it's not fun. If you want to play multiplayer, because that's what Smash is for, to play with other people, well, you each have to have your own copy of the game. There's no download play. Wow, a Paper Mario stage. That's so cool. Oh, oh, there's wind. All right, get these freaking bees off of me. This is the only Smash game to have zero resemblance or mention of Ridley. So rip Ridley fans. They put Corneria in the 3DS version, but not the Wii U. I really wanted to like the Mute City stage, but it's so mediocre. Why doesn't the smoke ball ooze cool colors like it did in Brawl? It's just putrid gray now. The flying men really piss me off. Honestly, what even is this level design? Some of these challenges aren't even challenges. Like look, here's one. Use a final smash while playing as Kirby. How is that difficult? Nice, a really cool balloon fight stage that's ruined by flippers and those stupid fish. The living room stage drops blocks on you, which you can't really see that well, and you'll die from them if your percentage is high enough. You know, the beetle item is so stupid. Like sure, you can button mash to escape from it, but sometimes that doesn't even work and still the item is just obnoxious. The whole game isn't in 60 frames per second. Let the nightmares begin. I've never understood the point of Trophy Horde. You know, it's cool seeing the trophies up and close and stuff, but looking at them all unorganized in a pile? Okay, so you can choose your path in classic mode, but it's still random who you're fighting. 
Something about this just doesn't feel right. The tournament mode was never added to Smash 3DS. My hands get cramped up so easily after playing this for a long time. While there's 42 stages in total, 12 of them are from previous games. Quality over quantity next time. You know, there's really no reason to play this version of Smash when the Wii U one exists, so go play that one. Unless you really like Smash Run or something. Warning! The following video is over-exaggerated because I actually really like this game, so this is a pretty nitpicky episode. It's all in good fun, and Knuckles, Knuckles. That didn't make sense. This game is literally just nostalgia. I mean, look at these graphics, man. They are in 4K running at 120 frames per second. Another remake of Green Hill Zone? Just what I wanted. Not only are half the world's remakes, but some of the stages are similar to their counterparts. Even some of the Blue Spear stages are the same from the original. That goddamn spring from Sonic 1 is back with a vengeance. Ugh, there's piles of robot garbage that you just sink through. That's disturbing. Flying Battery Zone isn't fast enough for me. There's a lot of slow parts. Tails is just as useless as ever. Oh, look at this! Bouncing Jello! Oh yeah, that's so cool and clever! <laughs> oh boy, you aren't fooling me, man. Man. You stole this idea from Shovel Knight, didn't you? See, look at this. It's the same thing, same concept. Stolen. Hey, look, discount Sky Chase. Starlight Speedway has not changed much in concept. It's still confusing and makes me dizzy. Why is Sonic flying the plane? That ain't right. You can't spam the water shield super fast anymore. Oh, and Sonic water levels. They're all bad. Robotnik in his snorkel suit freaks me out. If they went out of their way to meme their own game by adding a and Knuckles mode, they might as well have just called the game Sonic Mania and Knuckles. Ha ha ha. It's actually really funny. I'm Serious, I love you, Sega. Oh God, Fang the Sniper is in this game? Wait, there's Fang, Bark the Polar Bear, and Bean the Dynamite. What the hell? How was I supposed to know there were spikes up there? Oil Ocean Act 2 is a recreation of our pollution levels in 100 years. Thanks for the reminder. Also, the smoke drains your rings. What a great feature. The narrator is overly cheesy. Listen to this. Knuckles! Okay, jumping with this uh, robot thingy is really tedious and slow. Little Amy is scary as hell. Oh nice, another rehash boss. The final boss is kind of anticlimactic. It just kind of ends with no real buildup or anything. Why is the competition screen stretched out so much? Also, you can't play competition mode online. So apparently, Heavy Magician and Heavy Rider are girls according to the manual. That doesn't trigger me or anything, but I had to mention that because, like, that's that's really random? Like, uh, what? Out of 12 zones, only four of them are new. There's this enemy that takes pictures of you and stuff, but I did not sign a consent form to get my picture taken. Girl. Uh, okay. Eggman Pirate TV. So, Eggman not only enslaves animals, but he can't even pay for cable. What an if you hit a bomb during the special stage, you have no invincibility frames afterwards, so you can easily get comboed by bombs and lose all of your rings. Warning! The following video is over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my actual thoughts and feelings. So just realize that you are beautiful and I love you, okay? Mario Kart? More like mediocre kart, am I right? That compressed sound though. When you're turning, arrows appear on the screen, as if I couldn't see the road to begin with. If you're trying to unlock all the cups and stuff, there's not much room for error. You can only get fourth place or worse three times or else you have to start all over again. What a stupid feature. Where is Waluigi? IGN says that Waluigi's in the game, but guess what? Waluigi's just a hoax, he doesn't exist. Now I'm just triggered from IGN. Speaking of, there is no new characters. They all just returned from Mario Kart 64. Most of the sound effects the characters use are ripped from Mario Kart 64 too. One Bowser Castle is great. Two is kind of pushing it, but seven? Yeah, there are seven Bowser Castles if you include the retro tracks. Bowser Castle 1, Bowser Castle 1, Bowser Castle 2, Bowser Castle 2. Nintendo, you really gotta work on naming your tracks better. The item distribution, par usual, is awful. That crab is dabbing. Are, are, are you serious? You can't jump while holding an item behind you. You just use the item instead. Triple shells are the exception, but still. Rainbow Road, ugh, and the SNES Rainbow Road. The two worst Rainbow Roads in one game. There are no new items. 
You know, it's like this game is just half Mario Kart 64. At the time, I'm sure Super Circuit looked great and all, but now it's just a freaking mess of pixels. Some of the songs are okay, but a lot of them aren't very memorable or catchy. Too many tracks look exactly the same with the only difference being the direction you drive in. Power sliding is kind of crappy to pull off. Sorry, but Cheese Land doesn't remind me of cheese at all. Snowland. What a creative name. This whole track is covered in ice. And the stage freaking shakes your screen the whole time. God. When a shy guy latches onto you and steals your coins. Don't even get me started on the booze. There might be a lot of tracks, but quantity doesn't equal quality. You can't throw triple shells behind you. What is up with all the blimps? Did Luigi sponsor the game? That's Mama Luigi to you. Oh uh, yeah, there you go. Just you know, flash a picture of rain droplets. That'll make it look like rain. I know this is lava, but it looks like balls of ketchup in this picture. You shouldn't be allowed to make the retro tracks three laps long. That's just untraditional. Toad looks so derpy. I mean, look at his eyes. I can't even use the different camera angles for the replays. What is the point of this speedometer? I am not a fan of these ice blocks. I wish you actually jumped that high when racing. This picture is fake news. There is no cool artwork for the retro tracks. Warning, the following video is over-exaggerated and there are spoilers. Wait a minute, wh who are you? I'm Rabbit Luigi and something crazy has happened. You don't look like Rabid Luigi. No, wait, let me, let me explain. Get out of my video. But- <laughs> Rabbids. Lots and lots of rabbits. They stole my identity. I told you to leave. But I'm the real Rabid Luigi. What are you talking about? My YouTube channel, that's my username. I've had it for like seven years now. Oh, I'm sorry. It's just, look, I'm, I'm just a little triggered. Well, you're in the right place. This game's story is not very dynamic or elaborate. Mario with a gun just isn't right, man. Wait, I have to take turns to attack? What kind of evil sorcery is this? Rabbit Peach takes selfies. I shouldn't even be surprised. All right, Naruto, calm down. Hell in a shell. Yeah, you read that right. Phantom is really annoying to deal with. There are some serious frame drops in this game. There's not much variety in the battles. It's just defeat every enemy or go to a certain place. Of course there's a season pass. Why, why wouldn't they, right? I can't jump outside of missions. Yeah, that's right. I'm playing as Mario and I can't jump. What the heck? You can't zoom out your camera during battles and it makes it hard to keep track of what's going on. You can also only turn your camera in 90 degree angles, which is strange because the rest of the game is 360 degrees. When you almost kill someone, but then they get healed. You can't tilt the camera up or down, only side to side. Those friggin' ghost rabbits that keep teleporting all over the place. The later hub worlds are a little too large, making it really easy to get confused and lost. There's a time limit on getting the red coins. Like, come on, this is a strategy game, not a platformer. Yoshi sounds so dumb in this game. Uh, these rabbits shoot bullets out of their nipples. Okay. You're a wimp if you play on easy mode. I, 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 I play on easy mode. Getting a critical burn never seems to help. Your opponent just ruins planned attacks. I wish every chest was just orbs. That's all I really want. D did you see how suggestive that wink was? Peach, you need to calm down. Solving this pipe puzzle really sucks. What is the point of these cards? I mean, the artwork looks nice, but they have no use. If I move my cursor while listening to a song, it just stops. Why can't it keep playing while I look around? You see this cool gold castle? It's not even real gold, man. Beepo said so. I can't play the co-op mode online with friends. Okay, adding Wario and Waluigi was pretty cool, but they're just clones of other rabbits with more health. They couldn't have made them unique? Fists for a hammer? But I already have fists. These challenge toad rabbits are freaky looking. This freaking level. If you've played it, you know what's up. Take two. Also, I've added more clips. Enjoy. Warning! The following video was made so you guys would stop requesting this video. Enjoy the compilations. Please. Uh. Pink. Gold. Peach. Then all of a sudden you get characters like 
pink gold peach. Who thought of that idea? I can't believe this, guys. This is actually a real thing. This apparently is real. Okay, so some of you may have heard Mario uh, Superstars. Wow, oh, what the? What is this stupid game called? I don't even know. Some dumb sports game. Let me. It's called Mario Sports Superstars. Okay, it's like a compilation racing game. All right, a racing game. I'm an idiot. It is a. Uh, I'm so angry right now that I can't even talk. In Mario um, Kart 8. In Mario Kart 8. The worst one. Probably like, like the Wendy Coupling. I don't know what. The worst one is Pink Gold Peach. Pink Gold okay. Peach. Oh! It's Pink Gold Peach, It's man. Pink Gold Peach. Why is Pink Gold Peach still in this game? Pink, Pink Gold Peach? We got... Oh, no. Oh, no, Nathaniel. Bro, I should probably destroy this. Or dare I say, Pink Gold Peach. Nah, I'm just kidding about that one. Pink Gold Peach, man. Oh, my God. <laughs> What? What? Where, where did you? Where did you? Where did you come from? Oh my God! No! No! <laughs> Guys, pink gold peach. Pink gold peach. Or Mario Kart 8 because you want to bother me and say pink gold peach is your favorite character. On. Nathaniel, you, you you want me you want me to send this to you? I can, I can, I I've heard you really like this. Did Nintendo really think that adding the words pink gold would make her an original character? Come on, guys, we aren't that dumb. It's just peach encased in metal. Oh, but it's gold, not silver, so it's totally different. You know, he, here's the thing, Nico. I bet if I threw pink gold peach at the sun, if I threw her at the sun, okay. She would melt into nothing. She would melt into absolutely nothing at all. That's what I wish would actually happen. That would be really nice. I know there's E3 hype going on right now, but look what I just got in the mail. You know, we've had a lot of really, really bad characters on this list. We've had clones. We've had lazy choices. And we've had just obscure pieces of garbage. Oh, that was terrible. <laughs> let me, let me, let me. Oh! From there, you're left to fight off the guardian of the castle. Pink Gold Peach! But this is a whole nother level. Uh, we got, we got Mario, Luigi, Yoshi, Birdo, Peach, Daisy, Waluigi, Boo, Baby, Mario, Baby, Luigi, Diddy Kong, Bowser Jr., Donkey Kong, Mario, Bowser, Rosalina. So actually a very decent, uh, la lineup, I have to say, they finally included Birdo in something and Diddy Kong in something. But then, you look at this page longer, and people are saying that freaking Metal Mario and Pink Gold Peach! Good stuff, good stuff. Good she is lazy. Obscure, and a clone. All three rolled into one. That's well, true. What's the newest trendy color of iPhone? Rose gold <laughs> iPhone. And no, else... no, you, this, what? Again, this is not relevant to her character at all. Are you serious? This is seriously the absolute laziest character I have ever seen Nintendo create. Whoever gave the green light for Pink Gold Peach to be added should be fired or just demoted, because that is ridiculous. Science just proved you wrong, guys. She's really amazing. No, no, you're missing the point. You're missing the point. You see, he couldn't even come up with good reasons as to why she's not trash. The first reason off the bat is completely irrelevant to why she's a bad character, okay? Go! <laughs> I have no idea who sent it. Yeah, I know on my face is really red because I was out in the, the beach. But who sent this? Did one of you send this? Did someone I know personally send this? Like, what? But there is a lot of proof that this could actually be a real thing. So I'm on this forum right now and people have said that they think they've spotted Pink Gold Peach. Is there any resemblance of Pink Gold Peach in this game? He says, 
no, but definitely there's some surprises about the two peaches. So sorry guys, there's no pink gold peach, there's no pink gold rabbit, it's, it's not gonna happen. Uh, I'm sure someone out there is gonna be disappointed. Uh, thank God, thank you Ubisoft. Screw pink gold peach. Piece Screw of it. Seriously? Pink gold peach Nintendo? Like, how did they even come up with something so random? Is there any reason Pink Gold Peach isn't an alternate skin to Peach? You know, okay, I get it. Her stats are different and shit, but like, come on. She wasted a character slot. I don't even know, what am I supposed to say about this? Just look at her. Look at how lazy this is. What were you doing, Nintendo? Did you have, what, 12 hours to think of one more new character? Hmm. We have characters like Birdo. Diddy Kong, King Boo, Nabbit, we could use any of these characters. They're all either fan favorites or they're new characters that could have been presented to Mario Kart 8 and could have been a great addition. But what we got instead was a clone of Peach and not even a clone that could be referenced to anything. Man, all right, here's, here's my first roast. Nico can always rock out freaking 10 reasons about why something's not a hero or not a bad guy, not a good guy, but he couldn't even come up with 10 reasons for Pink Gold Peach. He could only come up with seven. You wanna know why? Because his reasons are bull crap. They're stupid reasons. I can guarantee it, guys. <laughs> I don't know if I'm supposed to laugh or freak out. Where did this come from? Oh my God. So, apparently this is a, a bunch of cards, all right? All of these are team captains. So, if we, if we zoom in, this is Pink Gold Peach, apparently, okay? This is Metal Mario. Metal Mario, Pink Gold Peach, okay? And you know what the worst part is? People defend her. That's right, people defend Pink Gold Peach. Pink Gold Peach lives in that pretty crazy world that is the Mushroom Kingdom. Unfortunately. Are you serious? Are you serious? Why? Why would you do this, N Nintendo? No one asked for this. Nobody asked for this. And don't tell me that Metal Mario needed a girlfriend, okay? He was fine on his own, he could do his own thing, he don't need a lady, okay? At least Metal Mario was in Mario 64, he had a purpose, but Pink Gold Peach, she just exists for no reason! If this is actually real, I, 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 I can't believe this. This, I, this is actually real, I can't believe this. I mean, it's one thing to see her come back in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, okay, that's expected. Unfortunate that they didn't just get rid of her because she sucks. And you know what? Gold does not rust. rust oh my god, this is so dumb. <laughs> Gold doesn't rust. How does this mean she's not trash? This doesn't mean anything. Just because she can't rust doesn't mean she's not a trash character, okay? People will defend anything. But I'll tell you what, I'm gonna defend everyone that's actually thinking clearly. Nintendo, no more of this laziness. You can do better. I've seen you do better. I expect better from the NX. And I expect better from the next Mario Kart. No more clone characters. And if you're gonna do that, you're gonna make the costume changes optional. So say if you wanna play as Peach, you can swap out her costume. She will not replace a character slot. I will not allow it this time. Thank you. Warning! The following video is over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and feelings. So don't be all pika-pika on me. We just catching them all, I. Why didn't we get Pokemon Green? Green is my favorite color. You don't remember your grandson's name? What a bad grandpa. Let's take on the triggered video editor, John. 
the game overall is very slow moving. You get no running shoes. I wish I could pick all three Pokemon. Why does John always want to fight me? Like, just chill out, bro, okay? How did this guy know I came from Palatown? Has he ever seen me before? <laughs> Look how big my head is. It's bigger than the freaking windows. You ever been in the Pokemon Center healing your Pokemon, mashing the button to get through it quickly, only to accidentally start the process all over again? The game doesn't show the progress of XP gained during battles. Finding Pikachu in Viridian Forest takes forever. The items inventory is so scattered and unorganized. What is going on with Geodude's eyes? Mount Moon? More like Mount Zubat. When someone uses rap on you, I hate that move. Okay, so I'm gonna rant about the sprite art for this game. Like, let's start with Weepin' Bell. Look at that freaking derpy face. Like, what the heck? Oh, is that not derpy enough for you? Well, how about Executor? Yeah, three derps at once. Mmm, yeah, this guy's real intimidating. And what about freaking Pidgey Eye? He's got freaking paper origami wings. Like, just look at it. And then there's Arcanine. Look, I know Arcanine's got two eyes and all, but the way the sprites are done, it really makes it look like he's got just one big eye. And then there's Raichu's picture. It just looks really stretched out and crap. And like, what the heck is going on with Golbat? Is he licking dead flies off his wings? Why is his tongue stuck out so much? And Jesus, Parasect, oh my God, that thing is way too scary for a Pokemon game. Check out those Speedos. Ooh, okay, you know what? I'm not done with the sprites. Let's go to the back artwork, okay? Freaking Venusaur. Look at this thing. It's just a mess of green pixels. Like. Freaking look at it, it's just pixels! Like, how can you even tell that's a Venusaur? One million dollars for a bike? What the, what's the thing made out of? Diamonds? Nokia phones? Oh no, these guys were robbed. Let me just barge into their house. I'm sure there's nothing wrong with that. You guys okay? I know you don't know who I am. I don't know who you are, but I just like to break into people's houses. That's just kind of what I do. I beat this Team Rocket and got the stolen TM back. So instead of returning the TM, it's mud now, b So I can't pass just because this guard is thirsty. Like, come on, it's not my fault they didn't bring a drink to work. Why do I have to save when I'm switching boxes? That makes no sense. You can only use TMs one time. So if you screw up, well, that's just too bad. There's a limited amount of space in your backpack. Oh boy, digging through trash cans to hit two switches in a row sure is fun. Get the hell out of my way. Lavender Town creeps me out. I mean, just the music and... I, ugh. I wanted to catch this ghost, but it was sassy and dodged my Pokeball. What a jerk. Charizard has wings, is a flying type, but can't learn fly. That makes sense. Hard to believe this building is so tall that you can't see Celadon City from below. You know, wouldn't it be nice to know what these TMs did without having to select them? It's and SNES. Nice grammar. Focus energy is supposed to double your critical hit rate, but instead it lowers it by 75%. Oh boy, solving this maze. This brings back nightmares from my childhood. Anyone else think Giovanni looks like a vampire? Or is that just me? There's no reason to have escape rope if you've got a Pokemon with Dig, which most people will. This old man is a big pervert. Using rest will fill your HP and restore your status problems. Well, kind of. If you are burned or paralyzed, your stats will stay lowered unless you switch Pokemon. The Sylph building is just insanely complicated. You teleport everywhere and there's all sorts of crazy shenanigans going on. It's too much. Oh, right. Sabrina's gym. Well, isn't this just a bundle of fun? The awful sound Rock Slide makes. <laughs> You know how people say that the new Pokemon designs are really dumb? Well, Gen 1 isn't much better. I mean, Voltorb and Electrode are just Pokeballs with faces. And, and that's it. And Seal? Yeah, you know what? Guess what Seal is. It's just a freaking Seal! And Pidgey! Yep, it's... it's just a bird. That's it. Pidgey's just a bird. And Grimer and Muck? Guess what? They're just freaking Sludge. They're just purple Sludge. And Onyx is just a pile of rocks. So stop it, you freaking Gen 1ers. The Pokemon designs weren't perfect. Navigating Fuja City is such a pain in the neck. There's too many branches to cut and long-winded paths you're forced to take. You have to manually change Pokemon boxes when they get full. How am I supposed to know when they get full or not? Critical hits are based off speed. So basically, you'll get a ton of them with fast Pokemon. What is this quiz crap? I don't want to feel like I'm going back to school. Are you having trouble catching the legendary birds? Well, guess what? You basically have to put them to sleep or paralyze them to get any sort of chance at catching them. And sure, you could use the Master Ball, but I know you're saving that for Mewtwo. Magikarp exists purely to troll you. Use Splash. Yay. Oh, hey, an item! Oh, wait, uh... 
Oh, it's a... it's a Pokemon that looked like an item. Okay, you'd think John would stop being so cocky after losing every battle to me, but that's just John. He's a fighter, man. Victory Road is overly complex. The builder had no idea what he was doing. You know, Professor Oak not only scolds his own grandson in front of me, but then he takes me to some special Hall of Fame room. I almost feel bad for you, John. Almost. If you tried to catch Mewtwo with any other ball besides the Master Ball, your best option would be to use a Pokeball because this game is that glitchy. So after putting in literally a billion hours of playtime without codes or anything, I swear, I was allowed to fight Professor Oak. But then the game crashed on me. Aww. Warning! The following video is over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and feelings. So don't double on that dash, alright dude? The inclusion of special items is awesome, but why are triple shells, bob -ohms, and golden mushrooms exclusive? Those are items that everyone should be able to use. You can't do little jumps. I have to unlock Toad when he's always been a starting character in every other Mario Kart. Petey Piranha's head is way too friggin' big. I can't see anything in front of me. Also, King Boo and Petey Piranha are broken because they can use every special weapon. Blue shells are particularly bad in this game. You'll get flown in the air for what feels like 45 years before you can move forward again. The Chain Chomp item might be cool at first, but it'll just end up knocking you off stage in the harder tracks. You can't hold items behind you, so if you're trying to dodge a red shell or something, you have to drop the item you're holding at just the right time to avoid getting hit. Those people that say Peach and Daisy's special items are bad, when they're actually pretty darn amazing. Like, you literally steal an item you run into, like, did these people ever play the game? When you lose badly with the baby characters and they start crying. Shut up! Where is the single player versus mode? And where is the single player battle mode? A lot of the music is repeated over and over in different tracks. The fake item boxes are dumb in Double Dash. They should look really similar to the real ones, but have a small touch that makes them fake. But in this game, they look completely different, so it's obvious which item boxes are real or not. Why does everyone obsess over Baby Park? It's just a simple loop over and over again. I don't get it. That stupid tornado in Dry Dry Desert. For some reason, I always manage to get myself sucked into it. I've never noticed this till now, but why aren't the characters wearing seat belts? I know you swap out characters and whatever, but this goes for all Mario Kart games. Where is the safety? Look at this box art. You see anything wrong with it? No? Well, you aren't looking close enough. The L on Luigi's cap is backwards. Fail. I can only use three initials when putting in my name after winning a cup. I want to put in more. You have to unlock the special cup. How dumb is that? I can understand unlocking all cup tour, but why the special cup? Those wiggler cars in Mushroom Bridge and Mushroom City. They do so much more destruction compared to the other cars for no reason. And those stupid bomb cars. Like, why on earth are there bomb cars on the road anyway? I can never drive up the railing of the bridge without falling off. And even if you can do this, it's a lot slower than just driving the normal route. The bananas in the picture are winking at me, and that's really creepy. I get that there's like innuendo with bananas, but just, just, no. The stats for the Gogo -Go Buggy and Toadette Kart are different in the battle mode compared to versus races and nobody knows why. The physics and controls in Double Dash are really loose. Just play DK Mountain and you'll understand exactly what I'm saying. Sherbet Land is so unfun to play on. The ice slips you up all over the place, and then you can get frozen by the freezies on top of that. In Peach Beach, there's this random pipe that you can use to get a double item box, but it's completely useless because you end up being really far behind in the race. When the Cataquack flips you into the air. Block City is just die at Block 4. Like, let's be real. And did anyone ever like Cookie Land? It's a cool stage and concept, but it's just too small. You don't win any prizes for completing the All Cup Tour in 50 or 100 CC, so don't waste your time completing those. There's only two mushrooms to use instead of three in time trials. That makes no sense except for Wario Coliseum. The Mushroom Bridge logo isn't accurate. The picture shows a 1-up and not a mushroom. Get your shrooms right, y'all. WARNING! The following video is over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my actual thoughts and feelings. So don't believe in that 3D gimmick, because nobody really did. You got it? Wow, Nintendo. Hopping on that 3D bandwagon, huh? 
Well, thanks to that, your system costed way too much at the start, giving you an awful launch. And the 3D isn't even that good. I don't know about you, but it just hurts my eyes. The only game it was ever that useful for was Mario 3D Land. Even those that like the 3D don't see it very often. It's not implemented into a lot of the games. If you have manly adult hands, the 3DS is really uncomfortable to hold. So we got the 3DS, the 3DS XL, the 2DS, the new 3DS, the new 3DS XL, and the new 2DS XL. Whoever is naming their consoles is doing a terrible job. Also, I can't get over that new is actually in the name. Like, this console's not gonna be new in 20 years. Did they not realize how stupid this is? The circle pad is awful. The rubber piece can fall off if you play games too hard or too much. This system kind of ruined Smash on the Wii U. Instead of getting a true adventure mode, we got a 3DS version of Smash. You know, the, the version that nobody plays anymore? Did anyone ever use the AR cards after first getting the 3DS? Hmm? Or what about the 3D camera? Like, honestly, the 3D just makes your pictures look super blurry. And it doesn't help that the normal pictures are super grainy, it's, 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 it's just bad. God, what is that screen resolution? Oh, it's 800 by 240 pixels for both screens. That's not even close to HD. And games are still coming out on this thing in 2017. The original 3DS didn't have a second thumbstick, so what does Nintendo do? They give us the Circle Pad Pro, which is a huge slab of plastic with an extra circle pad. This couldn't possibly look more ugly, but hey, at least the new 3DSs have a built-in second circle pad. If you can even count this tiny little nub being one. I mean, just look at how small this friggin' thing is. There was no GBA Virtual Console, even though the console proved to be capable. The Ambassador program included 10 GBA games, so why didn't they keep going with that? The 2DS's design makes zero sense. Removing the clamshell makes it more likely that the screen will get cracked, and this was marketed mostly towards kids. Rip all those 2DS screens. Also, isn't it strange how the 2DS and new 2DS just remove 3D entirely when the 3D was the main gimmick of the console? Adding or changing the micro SD card on the new 3DS is like a giant science experiment. You have to remove your game card and stylus, unscrew the backplate of the 3DS with a screwdriver, and then you can swap it out. And don't even get me started on transferring data between SD cards. Ugh. You know, after all this trouble, why didn't any of the 3DS models have a lot more storage to begin with? And why did Nintendo include the ZL and ZR buttons on the new models when most games don't even use them? The fact that some games are exclusive to the new system. Like, you can't play Xenoblade on an older 3DS. Face Raiders is pretty terrifying, I'm not gonna lie. You can only get SNES games from the eShop with the new models? Like, are, are you actually serious? Nintendo, it's a SNES game. A SNES game! Like, what kind of nonsense is this? The only way you can play Kid Icarus Uprising is in 3D, and you have to have it on a specific stand. I'm sure the game is fun, but good lord. You know why we didn't get the Ice Climbers in Smash 4? Because of this thing. So good job, you inferior underpowered system. You done screwed it up. The 3DS themes actually cost money. Why? Why can't we just unlock them by playing games or something? If you want to use Amiibo with your older 3DS, you have to buy an additional NFC reader. When I'm turning my 3DS off, I also have to hit a button on the touch screen to turn it off. Why do I have to hit two buttons to turn off my console? Why did Nintendo get rid of PictoChat? That was the greatest service of all time. I didn't even know game notes existed until now. And I don't know why anyone would take notes when you have the internet with its millions of game guides. I also never saw a point to the notifications app. Whenever you download something off the eShop, you can't tell how long it's gonna take because there's no progress bar. Oh cool, a super outdated internet browser. It's not like I can't use my phone, tablet, computer, or basically anything else to surf the internet faster. Don't let the meme maker try to make your meme. It won't end well, trust me. You know what? Let's talk about transferring data between the 3DS and new 3DS. What you need is your 3DS, an SD card, wireless internet, the new 3DS, the micro SD card, which has to be equal or bigger than your original SD card, a size zero Phillips screwdriver, and possibly a computer and USB adapter to connect the SD card to the computer. You got all that? Good. Now go to system transfer in the system settings of both 3DS's. Click transfer from a system in the 3DS family on both systems, then on the regular 3DS you click send from this system, and on the new 3DS receive from 3DS. Then make sure to click delete to clean the microSD on the new 3DS so you can actually transfer the data. Then push no on the new 3DS to confirm no other SD cards have been used in that system. Then click yes on the regular 3DS to confirm that you're using an SD card, which is actually kind of ridiculous that the 3DS can't even register that itself, and then there's an option to transfer your data with a PC. But screw that, we're going wireless because this has already taken 
way too long. And after the data is finished transferring, you'll reset your 3DSs and it's finally done. Warning! The following video is over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and feelings. So don't splash me with water when I'm getting my tan on, okay bro? <laughs> Seven point eight out of ten. Too much sun. Well, you thought I was gonna say water. Are the Piantas really that stupid to believe that Mario is actually Shadow Mario? What is this, Sonic Adventure Two? We'll be watching you, pal. I doubt that. Traveling under levels is pretty cool, but should it really be this easy to get down there? What if a kid fell down and got lost? Collecting the blue coins. There are 240 of them. 240! And guess what they're for? You give them to some raccoons to exchange for shines. Yes, the shines! These raccoons should be the ones in jail, not Mario. Red coins that swim inside of rocks. All of the blue coins in Corona Mountain. I can't do long jumps anymore. You can't skip the cringeworthy cutscenes. This game controls pretty well, but then you play the pachinko machine level. What on earth happened here? I was shipwrecked and washed up here three years ago. Now, look, I know you can't swim, but you couldn't get help in three years? How are you even alive? Why does Yoshi have to hatch from his egg every single time? I can understand doing this the first time, but just why? <laughs> oh God, this guy's on fire. Whatever shall he do? Speaking of pianos on fire, why hasn't all this grass caught on fire too? Is it even grass? Guys, it, it can't actually be grass. What is with the piantas covered in the goop? Like, dude, jump in the freaking water! It's right there! Why does Mario have to spray you? You know how everyone complains about the sandbird level and how hard it is? Well, it's really not that bad, guys, because guess what? You've got a flood pack! Learn to use it! I will admit to the blue coins being annoying in this level, though. So Yoshi can be different colors like you'd expect, but not his neutral green color. Bowser talks. How dare you disturb my family vacation? Oh my god, I can't hit this stupid piranha. Also, who just goes around spraying birds? Like, I know they've got goodies or whatever, but that's animal cruelty! Where is PETA? Why is there a time limit to collect these red coins? There's no reason for that. Why can't these pianas get their own freaking fruits? I mean, come on, it's not like they're that far away. Well, except for the durian mission. Speaking of, <laughs> the durian mission. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute, wait a second. You know what I just realized? Mario is just stealing these fruits. And worse, he could be paying for them because he's got coins and whatnot. But no, I guess it just takes too long to do. Mario's a thief, throw him back in jail. To get the cage shine sprite, you're supposed to go through this elaborate path and whatnot. But anyone with a brain will just exploit this by grabbing the rocket nozzle and shooting up from the water. Pinna Park is not a safe park to visit. You got freaking missiles being shot at you and a robot Bowser breathing fire. Where is the inspector? The Chucksters never seem to throw you where you want to go. Mastering the spin jump basically breaks the whole game. Anyone else notice how annoying it is to rip off Gooper Blooper's arms? Or is that just me? Wearing the sunglasses would be cool if the game didn't look darker. Haha, ha, so clever Nintendo, it's totally not inconvenient for the player. Hope you have fun flipping the tiles for three years trying to make that picture match. The King Boo fight could take two minutes or 15. It's all luck based. When you're trying to get the red coins but those stupid ghosts keep pestering you. You know how Yoshi usually eats bad guys and then makes them into eggs? Well in this game, he eats fruit and pukes all of it out. Even PD Piranha is puking. Like, what is going on with this game? So you go through all this trouble to push a freaking huge watermelon down some hill while being forced to avoid like a million cataquacks only to see it get completely destroyed at the end. Oh, oh god, this star. I freaking hate this star. Why isn't Luigi playable or even mentioned? Shooting those pink balloons on the roller coaster. Why does running into something while on a blooper kill you? Like, you know, I can understand losing the blooper and having to get another one, but dying? I never thought that cleaning teeth could be such a chore. When you die, it takes forever to get back into the game. Mario doesn't talk in his sleep anymore. Top 10 saddest anime deaths. The Lilypad minigame. The fact that it takes 60 years to get to the Lilypad minigame. When you get all the red coins, then ride the fluff and accidentally jump the wrong direction. Collecting 100 coins in Serena Beach. Nuff said. You thought you were safe walking across this bridge? Nope. Honestly, getting 100 coins in any of the levels is extremely tedious. Except for Pinna Park. But still. These stupid jumps with the girders really piss me off. 
when you're just trying to collect a coin and then a freaking fish chomps on your head for a few seconds. Getting through the mysterious hotel shine is tedious as all can be. And getting any of the Noki Bay Blue coins, like they couldn't have put them in more annoying places. You really think this joke is funny, Nintendo? It's not funny. Okay, it kinda is. So what's your reward for beating the game and mentally destroying yourself getting all the blue coins? What could it possibly be? After all of that, what do you get? You win a postcard that says, have a relaxing vacation. Well, guess what game? I don't feel relaxed. Not after all that bullshit I just had to go through. Like, what the heck, man? That's it, a postcard? Warning. The following video is over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and views because this is my favorite game ever. So let's not be Bowser and get thrown into spikes by their tail, okay? So, is this the 64th Mario game? I'm pretty sure it isn't. Why can't my cursor touch the end of the screen? Ugh. Why does Mario scream when you delete one of the save files? I mean, it's hilarious, but there's no reason for it. Wait, so if Lekka2 is our supposed camera guy, Who's recording Lekka 2? Okay, is there any good reason Lekka 2 has to hold the camera for us? I don't think we need a person or an entity to hold a camera for a video game. Did Mario really believe he was gonna get cake from Peach? I don't mean actual cake. The text is hard to read, it's way too thin. The camera is awful. It only works when it wants to. How does Mario fall asleep sitting up? That doesn't seem possible. This game is ugly. Everything is just blocky or 2D sprites. You can't play as Luigi. And there's no multiplayer. I know Nintendo tried to implement it, but they couldn't get it to work. And you know, it's funny how the ROM hat community was able to pull it off. I know this is supposed to be a gameplay mechanic, but what kind of door runs on stars? I get the doors with keys, but there's no noticeable locks or whatever. This game has none of the iconic power-ups. No mushroom, fire flower, or stars. Controlling the wing cap is really annoying. The power-ups we do have can only be used temporarily. Is there really any good reason Mario has this sweep kick besides the break dance? <laughs> Mario's broken. I can go up some hills by just holding forward an A and then doing jump kicks. And don't even get me started on BLJs. With that, you can skip entire levels and clip through parts of worlds. And you can also glitch into the bottom of TikTok clock. I didn't mean to do this. This wasn't supposed to be in the script, but I want you to edit this in, John. Okay, please do it. Okay, thanks. Bye. I love you. Bye. You can only exit stages if Mario is idle and not just any time you want. To do wall jumps, you have to almost perfectly press the A button. You can't slide down walls. At the end of the game, you get this enhanced triple jump, which is kind of cool, but it doesn't really serve a good purpose. Why do you leave a level after getting a star? Can I stay there as long as I want? The chain jumps terrified me as a kid. Thanks for the nightmares, Nintendo. Koopa the Quick isn't quick. Even the re-race is easy. I like doing the 100 coin stars, but Jolly Roger Bay only has 103 coins. They really couldn't throw in a few extra. Why can't the mama penguin find her own kid? What a terrible parent. And to think that the penguin on the roof is the wrong penguin. That means there's another irresponsible mom out there somewhere in that cruel world. Unless this penguin's mama is the one inside the slide and she's just trying to raise money so she can make it by, but why wouldn't she hire a babysitter for her kid? And how could she tell the difference between the two baby penguins because they both look exactly the same and- Wait. What were we talking about? You can't use Yoshi. He only shows up at the end to give you some lives and then he jumps off the castle and drowns himself. What does this snowman have against me anyway? I just want a star. It's not like I'm hurting him. <laughs> it's pretty funny that Mario can lose his hat, but he takes more damage than usual when he gets hit without it. So his hat has some sort of protection powers? Anyone else struggled to get all five of these coins on the first try or is that just me? How does an endless staircase even exist? Maybe if you run up the stairs for 64 hours, 64 minutes, and 64 seconds, then you would get to the top. The depth perception is a little funky sometimes. I really hate these amps. Get out of my way. The clues for some of these stars are so vague. Blast away the wall. Wall kicks will work. Metalhead Mario can move. Watch for rolling rocks. Does this game think I'm like a poet professor or something? Instead of a bunch of big boss fights, you just fight Bowser three times. Trying to catch that stupid monkey. To unlock the cannon in Cool Cool Mountain, you have to go on this tiny island which can only be accessed by a tiny ski lift. Why is this so cryptic? Some of these stars are too easy. Like simply sliding down this slide and winning a star feels like cheating. Or just talking to Toad. 
I wish I could talk to people and they would just give me things. Why is this piano alive and trying to eat me? Okay, cool, I killed the boo, but why is the star spawning on top of the roof? What the heck? Getting the star from this freaking eel while he wags his tail all around. Also, Jolly Roger Bay is not jolly. The world is dark, eerie, and putrid looking. Tall, tall mountain, cool, cool mountain, dire, dire docks. Way to add that extra emphasis using the same word twice, twice. So long, gay Bowser. <laughs> Who cares if Bowser is gay? This is 2017. Get with the times, Mario. The toxic maze may be small, but it's easy to get lost if you don't know where you're going. If you get pushed to the edge of the metal cap level, you're sent outside the castle and have to go all the way back to Hazy Maze Cave. The A-Coin puzzle doesn't really make you solve a puzzle. You just run across some tiles and get the coins. The music is good, but it's repeated several times throughout the game. Was there really a point for this map? Nobody will remember this unless you take a picture of it with your phone. Pyramid puzzle, huh? If you count collecting five obscure out of the way coins as a puzzle, then there's something wrong with you. Waiting for the poles to move just to get some coins. This game lags like crazy sometimes. What's shocking about the arrow lifts is there's no need for them. You can easily teleport above the star or just long jump across all of them. I freaking hate the heave hose. They make me angry. When you're just going for a swim and Big Bass eats you in one bite. That moment when you're climbing up TikTok clock, but you mess up one little jump and you fall all the way down or you die. So I've actually never beat the Blast the Lonely Mushroom store normally because of how overcomplicated it is. You gotta talk to this red bob -ohm, land on a puny mushroom to teleport, then you dry hump yourself across this wall and finally take one cannon shot at the star or die trying. Fuck that, I'll use this fly guy to get there instead. I know this is obvious to everyone now, but who first thought of, hey, let me jump into this random wall and maybe something will happen, and then you're in Shifting Sandland. Gotta love how there's repeated pictures across the castle. They really couldn't make some new ones here and there? It's so easy to die in the tiny world in Tiny Huge Island. Just TikTok clock, just rainbow ride. You don't actually stomp on a thwomp, you kind of just run across its head and get to the star. Oh, you want 100 coins in rainbow ride? Well, you're forced to get a bunch of the blue coins from the Switch. But how do you get those? Simple, you just gotta perform about eight to 10 perfect wall jumps in a short time frame. But don't worry, one mess up and you might as well start the star over. Catching MIPS can be really irritating. What's the theme of Rainbow Ride anyway? Untextured blocks with some rainbows? Wow, what a nice big house with basically nothing of value inside. How does ground pounding two blocks drain all the water? Where did the water go anyway? You can fall from 10 million feet, but a simple ground pound or jump kick near the bottom will slow you down in your Gucci. Wow, that was an easy red coin to find. And same with this one. Oh yeah, it was totally obvious. When Bowser starts it's teleporting, there's no coming back. The metal cap is so useless that you could technically beat the whole game without it. So if you fall in this level, you go all the way back to Peach's castle. I appreciate the realism and all, but my god is it annoying when you mess up. Also, you gotta love how you can just stand on clouds. Try that in real life. This has to be the worst town to live in. All it takes is a flick of a switch and everything is flooded. No wonder nobody lives here. It that really you? It that really you. Nice one, guys. What are you talking about, boy? Wait a minute, are you Kevin from Hobo Bros in SMG4? My 64 is the best. You even said that yourself a billion times. Yeah, but it was just a joke. Th that's it. Mario, Mario attack! attack! Here we go! Hey, Stinky! What the heck? Say, I'm a hungry. Have you got any food? Yeah, I've got some food. <laughs> Uh, not quite. No! No, no, it's it's okay, really. I, I have the next best thing. No, 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 no. So what do you think? Where's my burrito? I don't have a burrito. Ooh. Yeah. Well, hey, do you want to play some video games? Well, I've got a lot actually, right there. <sighs> Okie dokie! So, what are you thinking? Oh, you don't want to play that. Are you freaking killing me?! Okay, okay, we can play it. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. No, you gotta, you gotta go through the rings. No, no. Oh, shit! <laughs> Warning! The following video is over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and feelings. The real question is, does this game actually have a star road? Let's find out.
The text at the beginning isn't 3D enough. Give that text some girth, man. Mm. Mario doesn't say hi at the beginning either. Rip the giant 3D head. It bees. Not the bees! Ah! Those godforsaken bees. They move too fast and have sporadic patterns and... They're just bad, okay? This Ice Bully fight is so glitchy. Simple Flips doesn't get a shout out in this ROM hack. You have to be so specific with this cannon shot to get the Toad Star, or else you'll fall all the way down and have to climb back up all over again. Also, why is this Toad just chilling up here? It's not like he's guarding the castle or anything, he's just enjoying the view as he says. I don't trust this guy. You don't even need this giant block to get this star, like literally just do a triple jump dive or a long jump. It's that easy. I can no longer recommend this game to claustrophobic people. When you're climbing up this toy tower, just chilling and whatever, but then you get burned by this stupid fly guy and fall all the way to the bottom. Also, why does this ground have dominoes that fall so hard that the ground shakes? Like, just look at this. Like, what am I playing, Kaizo Mario? Climbing these trees are so awkward and annoying. This cannon shot is so dumbly precise. And yes, dumbly is a word whether you like it or not, okay? And look at this cannon shot. Ugh, I hope the rest of the game doesn't have garbage like this. Just when you thought pipes were safe to jump down. I, I probably should have read the sign first. So this star wants you to unlock the metal cap and hop up these really tall platforms, when instead you could just climb up the tower and long jump. Like, come on man, look how easy that was. These tiny little stumps have always pissed me off. They're so annoying to climb up. This purgatory level has no color. I like color. So I tried to kill this bob -ohm, but he didn't die. Why isn't he blue like the other helper bob -ohms? When you go through this first door, you put the lock in on the side and not in the keyhole. Not really sure how that opens the door, but all right. Could climbing this tower be any more annoying? Instead of normal steps, no, you just, you just gotta double jump from these vertically placed platforms that are all the same length. Psh, easy. How's my painting? Honestly, dude, it's awful. It's got gray splatches all over it. One out of 10. I can't read the text from these beautiful sun and moon statues. And that's sad because they're beautiful. So how has the big bob -um fight evolved? You throw him four times instead of three. Wow, so much harder. This lily pad star can burn to the ground. The timing you're allotted is so little that you can't really make any mistakes. Again, your responsible penguin parent is irresponsible. Keep track of your kid, dude. Who is gonna go for this one-up? It's insanely difficult to get back up afterwards. Like, you'll probably die defeating the whole purpose of collecting it. Mad Musical Nest is just the worst. There's a million invisible walls and it's so easy to die. Like, why is there so many bullet bills coming out of this flute? Come me some slack, man. Okay, this purgatory thing was kind of cool at first, but I'm really tired of being forced to play it every time I die. Ew, a water level. Nobody likes those. There's this crack in the wall that I want to break, but I can't. It's just decoration. Why does Koopa the Quick waste his time by running around the pillars? What an idiot. Also, this mini Koopa doesn't give me a Koopa shell like in the original game. What a tease. Climbing up this tree is so annoying. All the jumps are really janky and require supreme accuracy. The Wiggler boss is a bit faster in this game, but he's still stupid easy. Whoever built this house of cards cheated. They clearly glued them all together. Oh look, a star road. Well, aren't you just so clever, huh? Um, I can just walk through this wall. All right then. Good God, this red coin. The platform is not only tiny, but it's surrounded by deadly quicksand. This thing is just killer. Wait a second. Star one and star six are in the same place. I'm not sure if lazy or ironically genius. Look at these friggin' platforms. I might as well play the game blindfolded. Why? Is. There. So. Much. Wall. Jumps. This. Is. Dumb. Oh my god, look where this replica star is. This has to be the most obnoxious star I've ever had to get. Like, are you kidding me? Have you been struggling to get this star in the cage? Well, guess what? You have to enter this black hole to get there. Like, that's just, that, that's actually so cool, I'm not gonna lie. After you beat the game, you don't get a super fancy triple jump like in the original. I have so many questions about Hidden Palace. Why am I given so little room to make this wall jump? Why is this platform so annoying to climb up? Why do I have to triple jump off what's basically the size of an ice cube? Why is Peach just chilling out here? And how did she get up there? And why do I have to go up this godforsaken obstacle course twice in a row because the replica star is on the roof? What? Why? How? No! Warning. The following video is over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and feelings. So don't throw vegetables at me. All right, dude? Say it with me, everyone. This game is a reskin of Doki Doki Panic. Good, we got the most obvious fact out of the way. 
Okay, seriously? Radishes as a weapon? What kind of game is this? Where's my fireballs? And why doesn't jumping on an enemy kill it? Like, what the heck do- uh Oh, you can pick it up. Okay, that's actually kind of neat, I'm not gonna lie. Fanto, just freaking Fanto. If you've ever played this game, you know how obnoxious he can be. Okay, seriously, what gender is Birdo? And why do we still not have an answer to this question? I mean, it's not like it really matters, just be as you as you can be, okay? <coughs> If you get a game over and run out of continues, you go all the way back to the beginning. So either get a ton of lives or become a Mario God. Also, getting extra lives is complete luck. You have to make a match of three in a slot machine, and you can only do this if you use the potion to get coins from the ground. And yes, there's one-ups in the levels themselves, but they're extremely scarce. So apparently, spaceships grow in the ground. I never thought I'd live the day to see this. When you go up or down a level, the whole game stops so the screen can move. The NES was more primitive, yes, but it is annoying to deal with. This waterfall is destroying my eyeballs. Like, like seriously, don't stare at it. Honestly, the only good character is Peach. I shouldn't have said that. How the heck do I get across this freaking gap? Oh wait, I have to ride an egg. Okay, that's kind of clever, but also stupid. The pause screen is so bland looking. It looks like it comes from a Game Boy game. When you get stars in Super Mario Bros. 2, you actually just turn into a zombie. I hate fighting Mauser, especially when you're standing in this corner because it's the easiest way to grab the bombs, but you miss picking one up and then a million bombs spawn in that spot and you just gotta wait for the explosions to end. It's just, ugh. Why do you randomly get eaten by a bird after beating a level? Digging through the sand can be a nightmare if you don't know what you're doing. Oh, come on, a dead end? Are you serious? Would you guess that if you wanted the first mushroom in two, three, you have to bring the potion all the way to the left of the level? How is anyone gonna know that since for all the mushrooms before, the mushroom is right next to them? So touching the top of the whale's water spout is fine, but the water below hurts you? It's kind of hard to tell what's quicksand and what's just normal ground. When you throw an enemy at the ground, it doesn't die. You have to collide it with another enemy. Oh great, now I'm getting nuked by some birds. There's no two player. You can't even take turns playing through the game. I applaud Mario Bros 2 for having more unique bosses than just Bowser eight times in a row, but why am I fighting Bowser twice? And same goes for Triclide too. Okay, I get the background was going for like a sunset look, but it's just pink. I mean, I can make that in Photoshop. You just select pink, click the bucket, and bam. There's no shades of color or anything, and it just looks janky. Also, ice physics. Nobody likes ice physics. So Peach has blonde hair in the artwork, but in the game it's brown. So which is it, Nintendo? Maybe she's secretly Daisy. <laughs> And now I can pull bombs out of the ground? This game is getting dark real quick. Climbing up the vines really suck. The controls get so slippery. The final boss with war sends a bad message to kids. Hey look, vegetables are bad for you. I'm dying from eating this nutritious food. Oh, of course, the whole game was just a dream. Way to end this in the most stereotypical way possible. Warning, the following video is over exaggerated. There's some spoilers in this video, but you've probably seen them by now. So please, don't possess me with a magical cap, all right? So the game starts with a menu showing two buttons with no fancy music or anything. Talk about bland. But the menu changes after saving, so why was it not like this before? Why the long face? You look good in that hat. Quit your whining. How did Mario know throwing his cap was going to come back to him like a boomerang? I'm pretty sure Cappy didn't tell him that. Okay, who would even want to attend Bowser and Peach's wedding? I don't know anybody that would. But then you actually get to the wedding and there's a ton of people there! What the heck? Why don't you guys come help me? Bowser's wedding planners are bunnies. How pathetic. Would you look at that? There's a game journalist mode. No wonder the review scores are all 10 out of 10. What is the point of this brochure? I mean, I like the map, but all this text on the sides? It, it, it's too much reading. This is the tiniest hub world of all time, if you can even call it that. I don't look dressed for swimming. Dude, I'm Mario. I can swim perfectly with overalls and shoes on. Now let me through the door. Why didn't this P-Block spawn a million blue coins? Come on, I need those things. They actually matter in this game. So in Mario 64, you collect stars. In Mario Sunshine, you collect shines. And in Mario Odyssey, you collect moons. So what's next then? Asteroids, dark matter, black holes. Uh, hey Mario, I, I, uh, I think you forgot to put your clothes on. Um... Oh god, Klepto has returned, and this time my cap really is meaningful. I really love this flying lizard thing, but it would have been so much cooler if he could actually fly instead of just glide around. 
why does Mario smile when I'm about to save? It's not that exciting. Mario, can we talk for a second? Look, dude, j just date Pauline already. I mean, come on, she's way prettier and she's a mayor of a city and she isn't constantly getting kidnapped either. I can't even wall jump in the 2D sections? That's lame. I'll never understand why Captain Toad is always in the most isolated places. Kind of worried about it. Okay, Cappy, can you stop trying to teach me moves every time we go to a new kingdom? This power moon is literally just Star 3, Treasure in the Ocean from Jolly Roger Bay. I have a newfound respect for Hammer Bros. How they throw anything accurately is beyond me. Oh god, Cloud Mario is really terrifying. And that's not the only scary thing. Look at these Ma Rays. The hypersensitive details to this thing is just... <sighs> oh, so you can be Yoshi, except you possess him and give him a mustache. I'm not sure how I feel about this one, guys. I appreciate that there's new mini bosses instead of the Koopalings, but they're still way too easy. Or maybe I've just gotten really good at platformers? I don't know, they're just, they're too easy. Wall jumping in the Moon Kingdom is broken. You can save yourself if you miss a jump so easily. Okay, this snow should have definitely collapsed. Gravity is non-logical, apparently. Sorry, guys, but you can't play as Luigi. But you can get his costume, which, I mean, does that even count? I don't know. So the total amount of power moons you can get in this game is 999. Why not just top it at 1000? I don't like this odd number. The slide levels aren't nearly as fun as they were in Mario 64. You can't capture the sheep. Of all the things you can capture, this is the one where you can only herd it into a pen. Hey look, it's the IROC boss but with a giant floating head now. And it's also blue instead of brown. For a game that claims to be open world, there sure are a lot of linear sections. Not saying that's bad, but the marketing was kind of misleading. There's moments where I actually think I'm playing Mario 3D World and that isn't a good thing. You would be surprised how annoyingly hard it can be to get to 100 jumping this rope. Trying to catch this friggin' bird is ridiculously dumb. Why do I gotta do this? What the heck? 9,999 coins for a costume? How ironic that it's a skeleton costume too, because I'm gonna be dead by the time I get that many coins. Oh wow, a new kingdom. The dark side, ooh, that sounds epic. And it's just boss refights. Well, I really wish there was a way to swap costumes on the fly. I mean, there's lockers you can change in at every world, but it would have been nice to swap with a menu. Not gonna lie, the people in Mario Odyssey really remind me of the people in Sonic 06. And I feel bad for saying that because this game rocks. This game got to my heart throwing in the Mario 64 costume, but why aren't the Mario 64 voice clips applied to the costume as well? Yahoo! This face game is basically impossible without cheating. If you tell me you didn't snap a photo of the original picture to do this, then you're lying to me. After looking for moons for like eight years and then fighting Bowser again, what do I get for all my hard work? A postcard. Yep, that's right, a postcard. The same crap that Mario Sunshine pulled after collecting all the blue coins. Wow. Warning. The following video is over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared are accurate to my true thoughts and feels. And yes, I know Luigi is the true god in this game. Heard a der? I know this will be controversial, but the controls are garbage, okay? Moving in a three-dimensional game with a D-pad just doesn't work. They should have remade this on the 3DS. And you can only run if you hold a button, which also feels quite awkward since in the original, you just go fast right away. But no worries, if you don't like the controls, you can always just move around with the touch screen. Apparently people actually adjusted to this control scheme. Props to them. The voice clips sound pretty awful and compressed. <laughs> I was never able to play the versus mode online. It could only be played locally. They put in all this effort to add in new characters, but left out our boy Waluigi. I mean, come on, this white door looks out of place. I mean, really, where is the waifu? I mean, come on, look at Wario, he's all alone. Aww. Some of the mini games are so stupid. Like, why is Yoshi sitting on some rock picking apart the petals of a flower? Or what about this psychic card game? This would be perfectly functional without the touchscreen. Let's face it, the wanted minigame is impossible to lose. One time I played for like two hours straight and stopped just because I got bored. It sucks when you're rolling the snowball down the hill and it gets stopped by a rock or penguin. And don't even get me started on mix a mug matching up faces from slots is never a fun time. It's so stupid that Mario is the only character that can wall jump. Like, what kind of sense does that make? Wall jumping should be a basic move that everyone has since it's used in like a million scenarios. Nobody even likes playing is Wario. He only exists so you can break the black bricks and that's it. Luigi is OP as hell. I can't tell you how many stars I've managed to get just by using his backflip. Let's have some fun and see how easily Luigi breaks the game. Oh, what's this? Mario's super wall kick? More like Luigi's super backflip. Haha! -ha. 
Or what about this giant snowman? Oh, he wants to blow me off the track. How about, nope, son, I can just fly over. Or wait, what about, hmm, blast to the lonely mushroom? You know, that's funny, I think there's a typo in that, because it's supposed to say, backflip to the lonely mushroom. Yeah, like seriously, I could just go on all day, but, but my lunch hour is in 10 minutes, so, you know. What's this? Three file selects? There's supposed to be four like the original game. This is breaking tradition. The idea of turning into other characters by putting on the caps is cool, but wouldn't it have been so much nicer and more efficient to just push a button to swap out characters? Ah, uh, but hey, I'm pretty sure this game kind of inspired the main gimmick of Mario Odyssey, so there's that. There's still a lot of issues this remake didn't fix from the original game. One of the biggest being that when you grab a star, you're sent all the way back to Peach's castle so when it would have been nice to just continue after grabbing it. It's cool that this game added new stars to each course, but most of them are just silver stars or the time switch stars. There's barely any other variety outside of that. I can't do BLJs anymore. Like, come on, I want to take on Final Bowser early. The power-up system is kind of confusing. Sometimes breaking open the box lets Mario fly, and sometimes it's an exclusive power-up. Why did it use a separate colored box for flying and just let every character fly? Holy crap, this penguin put on some weight. I don't really know why this happens after beating the game. It just does? Why don't these walls in Womp's Fortress have cute little eyes anymore? And why would they change the beautiful blue thwomps? The redesigns just don't look right. They aren't thick enough, if you know what I mean. The only thing I think of when using a super mushroom is, oh, I'm playing on noob mode. That's cool. You think you guys are maybe a little excessive with the bunnies? I mean, geez, I gotta collect like three million. And it's the only way to unlock the mini games. You have to randomly find and catch the glowing bunnies, so good luck with that. It's strange how some of the worlds let you move the camera freely, while in others you only move in increments. The inconsistency isn't a deal breaker, but it's off-putting when you play a stage that doesn't have a fluid camera. While the graphics certainly look a bit better, there's a lot of places where you can see the pixels. I really like that old mission where you had to use the invisible metal cap to get the star, but now you just use the invisible cap and it's not nearly as nifty. Yoshi can't break the orange bricks or even ground pound booze. I don't see the reasoning, but okay. If you really look at the coins, they aren't shaped in perfect circles. It's more like an octagon. Come on now, I need my smoothness. It's way harder to control tox boxes in this game. You can't really pull back to slow them down. When you're trying to save your bro Luigi, but go through the wrong door and get sent all the way back to the beginning. They made the chest easier in Dire Dire Dogs for seemingly no reason. You have to open three of them instead of four. And this pole jumping segment got pretty darn simplified too. It's not even difficult. I mean, you can aim where you jump. Like, what was the point of this? When walking through the toxic gas, you get stunned in place, which can get really annoying. In the original, you just took damage and moved on with your life. There's almost no new music in this game. Once again, songs are repeated in levels over and over. You would think with this remake, we wouldn't have to fight Bowser three times, or King Boo, or the Big Bully, but we're still condemned to what's essentially filler stars. I wish I could jump into this painting. Like, it looks so cool. Like, just come on. I really love the new stages, but I wish they had more depth, and I wish there were a couple more of them too. I like how the monkey tries to convince me to pick him up. Like what, you didn't think I'd learn from the original game? Going to the roof isn't as special anymore. You don't get 100 lives for Yoshi and you don't get an enhanced triple jump. You know, I feel kind of bad for the Wiggler. We basically just flooded his house and now Mario is gonna step on him until he gives up a star. Kind of a dick move, man. TikTok clock is still annoying to climb up. Flying with the wing cap is now even harder to control thanks to the D-pad. And Rainbow Road is still the ugliest course. They could have redesigned it and gave it a facelift, but nope, it's just untextured blocks again. And it still takes like 10 years to get up this giant castle. Maybe they could have added like an obstacle course or something to climb up it. Like anything's better than just waiting on the carpet. Why am I only allowed to fight the final Bowser as Mario? I can understand not being able to use Yoshi, but what's wrong with Luigi or Wario? Bowser is no longer Rainbow in the final fight. He's just generic looking Bowser. It's quite sad. Warning. The following video is over-exaggerated. Some opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and feelings. So don't throw a party without inviting me. You got that? Why on earth is this game on the 3DS? Please stop supporting that system, Nintendo. We wanted the next Mario Party on the Switch. There's no online multiplayer yet again, only local play. But good luck finding three people that want to play a Mario Party game on a handheld. Are you kidding? There's only eight characters? Eight? And they don't even have Donkey Kong or Birdo. 
the 3D serves no purpose, just like 90% of the other 3DS games on the system. Well, would you look at that? There's a total of one game board. This is laziness to the extreme. I mean, I guess I should be thankful we aren't in cars again, but my God. Just look at how bland the board is too. Ugh, this is just pathetic. Oh, of course you don't play a mini game after the turn ends. What actually happens is someone has to land on a coin balloon, which turns into a coin roulette, and then you can pick from five mini games for the whole game, and everyone's choices are spun around, and it's, it's overcomplicated. The die roll only goes up to six instead of 10. I really hate that everybody moves at the same time. Time. What's wrong with taking turns? If I'm playing Mario Party, I'm not in a rush, okay? Oh god, this freaking shy guy is trolling with the flags. The Decathlon is the same mini games every time, and it's basically the same thing as championship battles. So what's the purpose of having two game modes that are both essentially tournaments? Why on earth is Tug of War in this compilation? Last I recall, Nintendo had to provide gloves to kids because they were getting blisters on their hands because this exact mini game. I was one of those kids, I know. Also, I can't really use the palm of my hand for tug of war it doesn't work with a 3ds sadly it is still impossible for the skater to lose in piranha pursuit unless you're an idiot and trip up on purpose i'm sorry but i don't know a single person that likes slot car derby top 100 my bunghole it's strange how they included hexagon heat as a mario party 2 game but it actually debuted in mario party 1 the graphics are more similar to the Mario Party 2 version, but this is still kind of misleading and confusing to newcomers. And it's the same deal with bumper balls. Maybe I'm just being nitpicky here, but still. I just realized, not a single handheld minigame was included in this compilation. Nothing from Mario Party Advanced, DS, and those 3DS ones I don't know or care to know the names of. Oh sweet, get some background information on all the Mario Party games. This could be cool. And it's just one sentence about each game. Okay then. The steering and speeding bullets isn't smooth at all. It feels like you turn in increments, which is really awkward when you're using motion controls. I kind of miss and bombs away when the last few seconds shot a giant bomb that would come from the ship and make a huge explosion at the end. The Mario Party 2 version was better. Is it just me, or do the minigames feel a lot shorter than they used to be? Mario, why do you look so happy to land on this red space? You're gonna lose coins, buddy. It feels kind of dirty to be playing the Wii minigames without motion controls. Whoa, 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 hold on a second. Why can't can I see the percentage of pizza we ate? Button mashers has to be the most awkward transition minigame. Trying to mash shoulder buttons with the face buttons is giving me early arthritis. The dual minigames on their own make zero sense for this compilation, because in the GameCube titles, they feel really tense and exciting since you had to bet against your own coins, but here you just play them and they're boring. The physics in bumper balls is completely different. When you hit someone, they go flying back and you don't really need to build up speed to do that. It's kind of lame now. Why is there only three mini games from Mario Party 8 or six from Mario Party 1, yet Mario Party 7 has 12? There's no consistency. I thought it was gonna be 10 games from each Mario Party. Why did they change the Mario Party 3 minigame Toadstool Titan to Mush Pit? The name change is really random and uncalled for. So I'm gonna run through a list of mini games that were missing from this collection. <clears throat> so where the heck is Balloon Burst, or Hot Jump Rope, or Crazy Cutter, or Platform Peril, or Bobsled Run, or Bowl Over, or Shock Trapper Roll, or Avalanche, or Stamp Out, or Chain Chomp Fever, or Fun Run, or Speed Graffiti, or Shake It Up, like what the- I'm, get <sighs> I'm sorry. I got a little carried away. Here's the thing about this game, okay? Only half of it is really being celebrated. The mini games overall are honestly great, but the lack of interesting boards to play on is really disappointing in a letdown. Warning. The following video is over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my real thoughts and feelings, so don't smack me in the nuts with a Wiimote, okie dokie. The packaging for Wii Sports is awful. All you get is this paper case and not an actual box. I know there's actual boxes out there, but this is what most people have. Put my wrist strap on, pfft, please, you can't tell me what to do. I have to push A and B? Why not just one button? This is overly complicated. Oh wow, only five games. I know this is just a tech demo, but isn't it sad that the best-selling Nintendo game is so underwhelming? Motion controls. I mean, come on, I kinda had to say that. The idea of exercising in video games put together isn't one I like. I'll never forget when I first played the tennis and was like, wow, swinging actually works, this is so cool. And then a week later, I picked up the remote after taking a piss and it moved the racket. And I learned that I don't actually need to swing with all my might to hit the ball. And that's when the magic vanished. 
and that's the problem. I can play most of this game sitting down in my chair. What's the point of the motion controls if they're so easily exploited? There's virtually no customization available with the sports. You can't change any rules or anything like that. Also, how is my me holding this racket without arms? All he's got is little stubs. Or, well, I mean, I guess it's like that for all the games, but what? I really hate that the Mii auto moves. I get they want to keep it simple, but what's wrong with using the joystick for moving? For the baseball, you can't play as any of the fielders. I love how the crowd is literally just colored circles. Very immersive. There's only three innings for baseball when it's supposed to be nine. Oh, wait a minute. They shortened it because they knew how boring it is due to a lack of depth and skill. You know what would have been cool for a game like this? Some online leaderboards. Competing with friends could have kept people playing this for much longer. I like that I can just stick my bat in my head. Just trying to get an itch out of my brain, you know? So of all the training games for baseball, none of them help you practice pitching. Why is there a way to play tennis with four of my own knees? What is the point of this? So guys, if you want to know your Wii Fitness age and see how old your body is, just play a random assortment of training games and that's it. I'm sure this test is extremely accurate and doctor verified. Why does the crowd freak out when you throw the bowling ball backwards? For all they know, it could have hit one of them in the face. Let's be real guys, the only good training game was power throws. The rest of them sucked. Why not take a break by jumping out this window? It's open just for me. You can't even do an 18 hole game. There's only nine courses. Swinging my club is twitchy. Like the only way I can get it to work is to hold the remote with one hand and carefully flick my wrist. Oh yeah, definitely feeling like a golfer now. And the boxing is so bad. You only have to flick your wrist to activate a punch. If you get to the pro levels in the sports, all that usually changes is the color of the tennis racket or color of the bowling ball. Wow, some reward, huh? And if you thought we were done there, well say hello to Wii Sports Resort. I'm glad there's more sports games, but why do they include golf and bowling again? They should have all been new. It's annoying having to point at the screen for some of the games. I know it helps with accuracy, but still. You would think that being surrounded by all these people, I would get totally destroyed. But nope, they're just taking turns fighting me. Am I playing Wii Sports Resort or Fruit Ninja? Well, the wakeboarding is pretty boring. It's really easy and doesn't take much skill. I'm not sure if the dog is real or is just got her in disguise. It really doesn't seem like the motion plus helps or even works in basketball. Like maybe it does, but I don't know, man, it feels off. Okay, why does everyone reset their positions when you steal a ball, block a ball, or miss a shot? This is the clunkiest basketball game I've ever played. When you miss stealing the ball, you fall on your damn face. A little overdramatic if you ask me. Uh, why is the ping pong ball such a different art style compared to the rest of the game? Flying around the island is honestly really cool, but I wish there was a way to just fly freely instead of being stuck by this timer. The canoeing is so bland, plus it seems like my strokes are pushing me on the opposite side that I want. Why am I pedaling a bike with my arms? I mean, come on, Nintendo. There really should have been an accessory to attach the controllers to your legs so you can run in place. But nope, I have to personally tape them on myself to enhance my gaming experience. Thanks a bunch, guys. You know, guys, we've already gone down the rabbit hole. Let's tear into Wii Sports Club. Oh goody, an HD port of a tech demo. What could possibly go wrong? This game barely looks HD anyway. They didn't bother to update any of the textures or anything. There's actually a day pass model where you can rent the game for a day. Who in their right mind would pay for this? But it gets worse, guys. If you like throwing away money and get the day pass, you must be connected to the internet to play the game, even if you're not playing online. <laughs> <laughs> That's hysterical. Holy shit, I actually found someone online. And the connection was laggy while I had full bars. Game, look, we're, we're just going bowling. Come on. I really shouldn't be happy that the 100 pin training game from the original is now a full fledged mode. The fact that I'm getting any sort of enjoyment out of this triggers me. Why is there a one handed option for boxing? Also, I can't even play this normally because it requires two motion plus controllers and I only have one. There should have been an option to use a nunchuck. Even with the motion plus, the boxing somehow got worse. I mean, check out this gameplay. You see how stiff this is? You see how much fun I'm having? I really don't understand the point of putting my gamepad on the ground to play golf. It doesn't look more realistic and it's really just a visual novelty. Well, I mean, I guess you have to point it at the gamepad, but whatever, dude. I'm not gonna lie, guys. I'm getting really freaking bored of this game. I wanna go back to Mario Odyssey. Warning. The following video is over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and feelings. So don't ask to fight me 1v1 Final Destinations No Items Fox only, okay?
it's not Melee. Or, well, uh... You know, Melee's overrated, okay? Oh, look at that. There's gambling in this game. Good job, Nintendo. The adventure mode is really fun the first time you play it, and then you play it again with another character. And again, and again, and again. And oh my god, dude, there's no variety. And here begins the cycle of clone characters. We got Pichu, the inferior version of Pikachu that literally nobody asked for. Then there's young Link, who's just Link, and Dr. Mario is just Mario, but throws pills. And the worst is Ganondorf. Like, come on, buddy. I know Captain Falcon's a cool cat, but there's no need to copy all of his moves. Why can't I use my C-Stick in the single player? Man, there are so many Kirby trophies. Outside the standard ones, there's Kirby Hat 1, Kirby Hat 2, Kirby Hat 3, Kirby Hat 4, Kirby Hat 5, Fire Kirby, Fighter Kirby, Ball Kirby, okay Sakurai, we get it! The Mario Bros. Madness event never made much sense to me. It's literally just you fighting Mario and Luigi for two minutes, and the goal is to get the most points. So basically, it's just like a random battle and not really a so-called event. Is it just me, or do the coins look like winky faces? I know they're S's, but seriously, just look at the black outlines and that's it. And now you can't unsee it! I can't hit every name in the credits, even when it scrolls slowly. The only way you'll possibly beat 15 man melee is to spam down B with Donkey Kong. And how ironic is that you unlock the N64 Congo jungle stage after completing this. Even Nintendo wants you to use the exploit. The adventure mode really starts off strong with a linear Mario level, followed up with a match against Mario and Peach, and then you get to the Donkey Kong part and you fight two little dongs and one big dong. And that is it. Uh, where is the cool minecart section or, you know, the adventure? If you don't feel like fighting Link, you can just bada bing bada boom over the stage. Yeah, look at that. Okay, so to get one of the trophies, you have to have a save file of Pikmin on your memory card. First off, how cryptic is that and what's the purpose of this? I don't know about you, but it sounds like some crazy obscure way to sell a new IP. I really don't understand the reason for the bonus game mode. I mean, I get it, score the most points to win, but it doesn't feel any different than just a normal versus match. For some reason, using the bat for Captain Falcon and Gandorf doesn't work well in the home run contest. You're basically forced to use their Falcon punches. It's funny how some in the competitive scene claim that Melee is a perfect game, yet only like four characters are viable. There's three Donkey Kongs, a Dixie Kong, Donkey Kong Jr., and a K. Rule Trophy, but nothing for Diddy Kong. The entrances for all the characters are exactly the same. No more popping out of a pipe, or bursting out of a barrel, or flying in with a star, or anything like that. Say hello to the easiest event match of all time. You push one button. Trying to fight Fox and Falco when they're invisible really pisses me off. And also, screw the cloaking device. Yes, you don't take damage when it's equipped, but you can't freaking see! Uh, what was the point of adding Mario and Peach to this? Was it just for decoration, or...? If you're playing against a good Jigglypuff, the rest move can be completely broken since it's usually a one-hit KO when it hits. Oh wow, an umbrella! Yeah, this will surely be an effective weapon. Maybe I can find a toothbrush or some dirty socks lying around. Flat Zone is a pretty neat level, but it's way too small. It's so easy to die due to the blast zones. Don't you just love grabbing the hammer and then the head falls off? Yeah, it's... It's not fun. Thanks game for reminding me that eating lots of greasy breakfast food is bad. I was already aware. Yo, look at this. Professor Oak is dropping the L on us. Hashtag rude. The problem with Icicle Mountain is that you're fighting the stage and not your opponent. Half the ground is icy and it scrolls so fast sometimes that you have to jump constantly just to survive. I can't believe Toad is used as a shield for Peach. That is so abusive. Getting this target requires you to throw your boomerang and then let it zoom past you and travel through the rocks. That makes zero sense. I really hate the lava in Jigglypuff's target test. It seems like I hit it no matter how I jump, even with practice. What the hell is Bowser's run animation? Is he taking like turbo turds to gain speed? Has anyone ever actually liked the Wobbuffet Pokemon? It's just so bland and uninteresting. Wobbuffet! I don't know why, but the difficulty for this event match was cranked up to an 11 for seemingly no reason. I've really only beaten it if the computer players are dumb and suicidal. I hate the Space Travelers event so much that it was the first gaming video ever on my channel and is ultimately the reason I'm on YouTube today. You see, you have to fight five characters with no way of refilling your health. It's so ridiculous. If you lose Nana while fighting, the Ice Climbers become a worthless character to use. The Super Mario Bros. 2 stage is really cool, but also way too too small. It's so easy to die on the sides because of how close the blast zones are at the end of the stage. What is the point of invisible melee? You might as well put a blindfold on. That's as much fun as this is. 
Okay, where did you get that cape, Dr. Mario? It's not your lab coat. Like, come on. It's not nearly long enough for that to work. Single button mode is just plain stupid. You aren't allowed to use the B button or even jump with Y or X. So have fun with that. Oh, dear God. The pit trophy looks so... Ugh. Thank God for the remodel in future Kid Icarus games. My goodness, this trophy collection is so scattered and unorganized. I don't see how it could be fun to look at for anybody. One million versus mode matches. Never thought you'd see this. Yeah, me neither. I'm pretty sure this achievement is impossible to get without hacking. This Peach trophy isn't even Peach. It's clearly Daisy. Previously. Maybe she's secretly Daisy. Hi, I'm While Big Blue is a cool stage, it's not at all suitable for fighting. You can literally die by standing on the road for too long. To unlock Mewtwo, you have to play either 20 hours of versus matches or play 700 battles. If you're trying to unlock every character, well, have fun waiting a whole day or grinding out battles for several hours. So Yoshi's Story, Fountain of Dreams, Battlefield, and Yoshi's Island are basically all the same stage. They're just four variations of Battlefield. Even though I'm including Battlefield on this list, you, look, you, you get my point, okay? Mark's grab range is so broken. He can grab players from like three miles away. I don't know about you, but Giga Bowser gave me nightmares as a kid. Warning, the following video is over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't that accurate to my thoughts and feelings. So don't use tilt controls for the love of God. Tilt controls. Freaking tilt controls. Drifting officially sucks now. You no longer control when the boost from the drift happens. I mean, it just kind of does after turning long and hard enough. And that's the so-called manual setting. For automatic, you just don't drift at all. What the heck? The thundercloud is one of the worst items ever. Oh yay, I get to go fast for like five seconds, but then if I can't exchange the cloud to someone else, I just get shrunk and lose all that gain speed. Performing tricks are really cool, but doing the huge jumps takes so long that they aren't even worth doing if you can avoid them. Let me get this straight. Peach, Daisy, and Rosalina all get bike outfits, but Wario doesn't? He already has one from the WarioWare games, and he's also really thick, okay? You're forced to use motion controls for tricks unless you use a classic Pro or GameCube controller. There should have been a way to turn that off. And even if you play without motion controls, you do tricks with the D-pad. Do you know how awkward that is to do? Like, look at my hands! What were they thinking? Oh god, Baby Peach and Baby Daisy? Why is there four baby characters? Please tell me this doesn't get worse. Oh, 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 no, no! The blooper is just as annoying as ever. It seems to spray even more ink on the screen. Also, uh, Funky Kong. Okay, uh, that came out of nowhere. So we got King Boo as a playable character, but not Petey Piranha. And also, King Boo shouldn't be a heavyweight because he's a ghost. And I'm pretty sure that ghosts weigh, like, I don't know, nothing, right? Right? Am I right? Maybe I'm, maybe I'm not, I don't know. For 50 and 100 CC, you're limited between either a cart or a bike. I've never understood that. The me voice clip sounds nothing like me. <laughs> it would have been cooler if they could have added my own voice clip in the game. Oh, of course the Blue Falcon is a playable cart and we can't play as Captain Falcon. That makes sense. So this bike is just called the Zip Zip. That's the dumbest name ever. Waluigi Stadium was kind of ruined because of all the added half pipes. Like, what was the point? And what's with all these ramps on DK Mountain? Um, hello? Let me trick off the freaking mountain, please? Oh no, I lost all my balloons. At least I spawned back in with more. Now I feel even more motivated to not get hit. If you actually go to the dictionary and look up the word nuisance, you'll find a picture of Mario Kart Wii's Pal Block. It's pretty neat that it takes actual effort to unlock characters now, but why do I have to be all the expert staff ghost in time trials to unlock a me outfit. And speaking of me's, why can't you choose a weight class and why is there two slots for them? Put them in one. This game was going to have mission mode, but it got scrapped. That is genuinely saddening. I'm not gonna lie. Battle mode sucks now because the stages are too big, 12 racers at once is way too much, and it just feels like total randomness if you win or not because of how hectic the matches are. And you can't turn off that stupid timer, let alone adjust the amount of time allotted. Don't even bother playing as lightweight characters. They're basically useless. It takes it takes like eight years to get up when you fall off a stage. Like, come 
on, hurry it up, Lakitu. Nice try, Block Plaza, but you still aren't Block 4. 4 out of 10, poor effort. Ranking in Grand Prix is based off of how well you play and not your placement. So even if you get first place for every race, you might not get 3 stars if you had bad luck with items. Let's be real. The Mega Mushroom is just stars, except you're big. whoop de doo And also, it lasts like 3 seconds, and you kind of have to be lucky like I was in this clip and have a lot of people near you, otherwise what's the point? Good god. The baby voice clips were somehow worse than they were in Double Dash. <laughs> Honestly, the bullet bill is just the unfun version of the chain chomp. What's the point of this half pipe in Wario's gold mine? Nobody will ever use this. You know what I just realized? The water section in Koopa Cape should be electrocuting all the racers since electricity transfers through water and we're like touching the water and we should be getting shocked. You know what I'm saying? The tolls in Moonview Highway aren't realistic. I'm supposed to slow down and pay a fee for crossing and I don't see no easy pass in anybody's car either. If you ever wanted to waste money on a piece of plastic, look no further than the Wii Wheel. And trust me, I wasn't going to pay for this, so I hope you've enjoyed this lovely picture brought to you by Amazon.com. When you get run over by a car in Coconut Mall, they really suck at parking. Diddy Kong's voice clips sound nothing like him. Like, what the hell happened? <laughs> Man, you can't even trick off the largest ramp in the game. What a shame. Anybody else hate Chain Chomp Wheel, or is that just me? They really should have just gone with either the SNES Battle Course or the GBA one. They both look and feel way too similar. Warning. The following video is over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and feelings. So please, don't force me to eat hundreds of star bits in three seconds, aight bro? Why do I have to use motion controls for the menus? There should be an option for a D-pad. Man, I can't even have Luigi or Rosalina's head for my save file. Okay, so I get that we can shoot star bits and stuff, but in relation to the game, where the heck are they coming from? You know, throughout this whole cutscene, Peach could have easily jumped down from the castle, Mario could have caught her, and they could have made a run for it. But nope. Instead, some floating airships just pull the castle out of the ground. Just a normal day for Mario. Oh, of course we're catching rabbits. Nintendo and their obsession with catching wabbits. I can't even dive in this game? That's so lame! So the red star definitely controls better than the wing cap in Mario 64, but why on earth is it only used in two levels? One of those being the hub world nonetheless. What a waste of a power-up. Sweet, sweet galaxy. There they go again, adding emphasis to one word to make it seem more special. So some of the Goombas look chunky and blown. I think space radiation has done a number on them. I like how this Luma tells me to hit all the switches after I've already done like half of them. Why do Grand Stars and Normal Stars have the same value? You'd think a Grand Star would be worth more than one. Why can I only use the Fire and Ice Flower for a limited amount of time? I don't get that when B, Boo, and Spring Mushroom have no time limit. I really don't care that much about coins anymore. Sure they can heal me and stuff, but they aren't useful for lives. Starbits have taken that over. Is it just me, or is it kind of disturbing to be rubbing Mario all over this Queen Bee? It just doesn't feel right. Shooting a vine plus star bit equals instant flower. Yeah, no. Huh, I didn't know we were playing Shadow of the Colossus. Agro, agro, agro. Gotta love how Luigi gets mail from Peach, but it's still addressed to Mario. Luigi gets shafted from everybody, man. I gotta say, Camilla, that green lipstick really doesn't suit you. While I certainly do like the Comet Stars, let's be real here, most of them are just filler content. Popping Tarantox's pimples is just disgusting. Like, ew, look at that pus get launched everywhere. Forced motion controls. This would actually be a fun level if I could use a joystick. It takes literally 20 seconds for you to collect your star, fly back to the dome, go through the coin and star bit counter, and I swear, it's basically just a 20 second loading screen. Beach Bowl Galaxy, because it's a beach in the shape of a bowl. Yeah, that pun went a little far. So in order to pass the final swim test, you have to take a shell from this kid penguin and claim it as your own. So basically, you're rewarded for being a dick. You know, I've never seen an undersea cavern floating in the sky before. Interesting. I don't like those pumpkin goombas that just poop out fire. That's just unnatural. Oh no, Luigi's stuck on the roof. Good thing I can just backflip, wall jump, and spin to him in five seconds. Wow, what a star, am I right? Why do people think Boulder Guys is so hard? He really isn't. His patterns are super slow and easy to learn. Good god, how long is this worm? Ugh. Deep Dark Galaxy, purple coins. Enough said. No wait, worse. Dreadnought Galaxy, purple coins. That can suck a big one. If you miss even one coin, you gotta start all over again at the very beginning. Oh great, a clone galaxy. You guys know how much I love clones. 
why are there so many levels where you just catch bunnies? I know we talked about this earlier, but I swear like five stars is just getting bunnies. Uh, randomly Jenga. Just straight up a Jenga match was going on. I can't do a long jump with B Mario, and I can't even break open question mark boxes. What the heck? Mario getting sucked into a black hole has to be the most gruesome death he's ever had to go through. <laughs> Why does Shadow Mario always yell, Gappy? What's so significant about this Gappy? Is it a secret girlfriend? The way this water twirls around at such a consistent pressure makes literally zero sense, even in a game where the gravity is funky. Considering the gravity is normal on this level, it's even more confusing. This toad's toe should be broken. Nobody can spin for that long. Controlling Spring Mario is the biggest pain in the hini. It's a cool idea, but he's just not fun to control. This has to be one of the worst robots ever built. Why is it able to be destroyed from just a few screws getting unscrewed? You see these star bits in the lava? This is a big problem, believe it or not. According to the storybook, star bits taste like honey, which could indicate they're made of honey. Lava is anywhere from 700 to 1200 degrees Celsius, or 1300 to 2200 degrees Fahrenheit. When you heat or boil honey, the water evaporates from it and it loses its flavor is due to the volatile oils in the nectar. Plus it destroys medicinal properties and makes it more likely to develop bacteria and mold. And what does Mario do with these star bits? He slams them into these poor little lumas! Heartless monster, I dare say. The fiery Dino Piranha is one of the most enraging bosses. You have such a small frame of time to hit his tail when it's not on fire. Why are the graphics randomly pixelated? I, I, I swear I'm not seeing things, right? Why is there a freaking time limit on blowing up trash? I understand things gotta get done, but this is Mario's first day on the job. Cut him some slack. Did you know that these chain chomps are officially called Chibi Wanwan? What kind of name is that? Um, yeah, you know, arms don't actually work like that, Nintendo. Unless Mario is secretly a robot. This catacquack is so stupid. Will you please stop jumping into the water? When you beat the game with Mario, there's actually one star you can't unlock. And to unlock it, you have to beat the whole game again as Luigi for one star. You can't skip the credits. Even after you get 121 stars, Peach is still kidnapped according to her letters. Whatever happened to defeating Bowser and all that? So what's your reward for maxing out your star bit counter? The coconuts turn into watermelons. Why did I even waste my time? Warning. The following video is over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my thoughts and feelings. Look, we love Nintendo for the games they've made, but there's been plenty of screw-ups that need to be addressed. And with that, get in or get out. That didn't really make sense. I know, I just like that catchphrase. The Virtual Boy. It's a red and black hunk of junk that looks like a pair of goggles, but without the headband. What's so virtual about it anyway? Oh wait, I see. It's virtually impossible to not get a headache when playing this. And by the way, there's like 10 games on the system. Fail. Okay, seriously, you're still claiming videos for copyright violations? Not even Activision does that shit. Fan games are ways for newer devs to express themselves. You're telling me that my Mario kissing sim is a breach of copyright? Come on, Nintendo. What was that DLC for Breath of the Wild? Should have should have been called Lack of the Wild. That was Nathaniel Bandy's joke. <laughs> Mario Odyssey was just too good. Now every other game has to live up to it, and that's simply unfair. Once upon a time, there was going to be an SNES CD add-on, which was being created by Sony. So Shonim. So Shonim. So Sho- Why did you write this this way? So Sony shows off their add-on at CES in 1991, and a day later, Nintendo breaks off the contract with them so they can work with Philips instead. Because of the abrupt breakup, Sony created the PlayStation and is now a well-established brand in competition with Nintendo. But tell me, was working with Philips really worth it in the end? Doesn't everyone love those classic games like Hotel Mario and Zelda Wand of Gamelon? Unless you're gonna give us an all Toad adventure starring exclusively Toads, perhaps at war with each other, then please tone down on them. We won't let those fuckers take <laughs> this land! The 3DS, the 1DS, the 3DS XL, the 2DS, the new 3DS XL, the new 3D, 2D, um, first off, these so-called new consoles won't be new in five years. And secondly, why do the names have to be so confusing and similar? It's almost as bad as the Xbox X. And you can't forget about the Wii U's name. 
except everyone did forget. People I know in real life that watch me play the Wii U on multiple occasions still aren't fully aware that it exists. And that's not their fault. The marketing is to blame. Poor Wii U, cast aside like garbage, only to be switched up entirely by having most of its games and legacy ported to the Switch. Remember that year when Nintendo released New Super Mario Bros. 2 and New Super Mario Bros. U within a few months? That was not a fun time to be a Mario fan, let me tell you. And do you remember Miiverse? Exactly! It was the premier social media platform and I'm so hurt that I can no longer draw dicks on my Wii U and 3DS. Why delete such a prosperous community? Where will people go to RP now? I'm still salty about the fate of Chibi Robo. Because the Nintendo 64 went with cartridges instead of CDs like everyone else, they weren't able to get games like Final Fantasy VII on their console, which by the way was a huge hit on the PlayStation, just saying. Sometimes us Murricans don't mind a few dick bulges, or you know, the forbidden breasts. Don't worry, it's fine. I see you using shirtless Mario and Link as sex symbols to market your games, but trust me, it could be so much more. I wish they could have kept Rare on board by just acquiring the company. They could have been such a great asset. Uh... Oh, uh, wait, on, on second thought. The N64 disk drive flopped so hard that it never even released outside of Japan, and only nine discs were ever made for the add-on. Look at all these games that deserve sequels, Nintendo Land, F-Zero, Golden Sun, and so much more. Just do something with your vast collection of dead franchises. You know what we need? Geist 2. Well, uh, you don't know what that is? What a shame, Nintendo, because we've all heard of Geist 1. What the heck is a Geist? Exactly. Not even the genius Nathaniel Bandy knows what it is. Great freaking job keeping your NES classics in stock, Nintendo. Now, thankfully, you are restocking soon, which is awesome news, but that shouldn't have been a problem in the first place. Please, Nintendo, appreciate your fans a bit more. Interact with us more on Twitter, post some good memes without that terrible impact font, and just be more active. That'd be great. Why the hell is there a handle on the back of the GameCube? Am I expected to carry this thing along with my briefcase to work, or what? Since third party parties left in droves after the Nintendo 64, the GameCube went to discs like everyone else. But of course, they were proprietary and had half the space as a normal DVD. Understandably, they wanted to avoid piracy, but it was just another reason the PS2 sold 10 times better than the GameCube. It was a cheap DVD player while also being a game console. The Wii Virtual Console was awesome. It had hundreds of classic games spanning several consoles, some not even Nintendo-based, and then the Wii U came around and uh, most of the titles are the same ones from the Wii. And if you want to play these games on your Wii U with save states and stuff, you gotta pay for it. What a disaster this was. What happened to Mario sports games? Remember when they were exciting and fun? Like Mario Tennis on the Game Boy Color. It had like an RPG story and shit. Mario Power Tennis, Toadstool Tour. Those are all my jams. But now we've got Mario Tennis Ultra Smash. It takes out so many features and just feels like an unfinished tennis game without much Nintendo love. Why? Why hasn't Super Mario Run dropped in price yet? The fact that it's still $10 is ridiculous. At least they've been supporting it a bit, but still. And don't even get me started on Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival. Seriously, guys, what is your obsession with friend codes? The freaking Switch has friend codes. I mean, come on. Why do I have to send my friends a bunch of numbers instead of just, oh, I don't know, looking up their name? So if you want to play Splatoon 2 online with their headset, just follow this diagram. Simply plug in your headset into this little mixer, then make sure this cable is connected to your switch and the other is connected to your phone. You know, uh, I think I'll just stick with my space, thank you. Remember when we saw the trailer for that Metroid game that didn't have Samus in it? That went over well. Who was this controller made for, an alien? You know, I love you, Nintendo, for constantly innovating with your controller, but I will never understand this shape. The Game Boy Advance SP was literally the perfect handheld except for one thing. There's no headphone jack. Everything was great, but that one detail, how did they miss that? The Wii has so much shovelware on it. The amount of crap that was sold on this console is almost impressive, but at least they're still coming out with my Just Dance Crave once a year. Warning! The following video is over-exaggerated. Most opinions shared aren't accurate to my actual thoughts and feelings, so please don't eat me with Yoshi or I'll turn into a pile of star bits. Is that cool? <laughs> 
Mario Galaxy 2, more like 1.5. Well, I can finally pick a Luigi head for my save, but still no luck for Rosalina. You know, how many times is Mario gonna fall for this, oh, let's eat some cake crap? Like seriously, bro, just leave Peach alone. Here, take this $50 gift card for the Cheesecake Factory and buy your own cake. Of course, I still can't dive. They could have at least added a couple new moves in. I know this Pee Wee Piranha is a bad guy, but it's just a baby and Mario's going around smacking a tiny. Like, look at him. His tush is orange from the pain. This plumber has mental issues. Does anyone else care about these blue warp pads or do you just ignore them every time like myself? Okay, yes and that's right mean the same thing. What's the point of giving me an option to pick responses? Why did they get rid of that awesome hub world? Now all we have is this spaceship thing that's just ahead of Mario. Like, come on, could he be more egotistical? So they brought back Wob's Fortress, but not Bobo and Battlefield? Also, I can't do cannonless in this game because the star isn't there anymore and BLJs were patched out. There's no way to let go of the spin drill, unless you get hit by something, I guess. The Cloud Flower is overpowered. You can basically break the entire game when you have it. Would you like to make a deposit or withdrawal? Okay. Okay is not answering the question. You can't avoid life like that. This is the easiest puzzle ever. They should have made it at least kind of challenging. This rock boulder power up kind of sucks. The turning feels really awkward and it's just not fun to use. I really wasn't that big a fan of the motion control stars in the first game and flying this bird is no exception. The controls work, but like, why? What's the point? Hitting these asteroid balls takes zero effort when you're blatantly given a target on where to ground pound. Kind of excessive, don't you think? Somehow, Yoshi can eat fruit out of his butt. <laughs> when you realize that the Bullberry is just the same effect as Matter Splatter Galaxy, but Nintendo tried to make it sound like something new. The boos move so slowly that they're literally never a threat, like ever. Oh, come on, they brought back this ball rolling nonsense. Yay, I found an infinite live trick. Now I've really got zero reason to care about one-ups. And they brought back everyone's favorite power-up, the Spring Mushroom. Boy, was I enthralled to see this make a comeback. Okay, seriously, screw this shiny rainbow romp bullcrap. You're given so little time to complete this star, and when I run into mud, I just want to give up on life. Oh, look at that. It's the Sandbird's son from Mario's Sunshine, and his goddamn dog is pissing me off. If you thought blowing up trash was bad, <laughs> wait till you break boxes with fireballs. It's somehow worse and even more annoying. Um, this is not a cannon, Nintendo. That's a, that, that's a launch star, and uh, you have actual cannons in the game, so... The fact that Lumas are asking to eat coins goes to show that Lumas aren't fed properly by Rosalina. Ugh, these puns are so bad. Just shut up, Toad. Okay! Nintendo, if you're gonna dedicate a whole galaxy to referencing Mario Sunshine, just make the sequel already. All right, Stone Cyclone Galaxy is literally just a section from Beach Bowl Galaxy in the first game. Don't try to convince me this is new, because it ain't. Ugh, fiery gobblegut. Fighting this guy is just obnoxious. Oh, screw off, Sapphire Blue Rosalina. I don't need your help. 90% of these green stars are just out in the open and super easy to get. But getting this green star pissed pisses me off, you have to be stupidly accurate. And this one is literally just Crash Bandicoot having a bad day. And this one throws depth perception out the window, so good luck. And this one can just go screw itself. And this one makes me want to jump into a super volcano while holding TNT so I can super die. God, these stupid flap techs are the bane of my existence. They're like a fly that you just can't swat away unless you actually grab the fly swatter and hunt it down for like 30 minutes. The Luma just takes Mario's hat at the end. What the hell, man? You know, the co-op is kind of lame. Instead of the second player playing as, oh, I don't know, Luigi, they get a star bit cursor that can collect star bits, stun enemies, and grab one-ups. Big whoop de doo The perfect run just went way over overboard on the difficulty. I mean, good lord, I get one hit point and have to deal with bombs, electric fences, lasers, and a million hammer bros. Give me a break. Warning, the following video is being made because people keep requesting it. Why are you doing this to me? Making me watch my older videos? Gross. Ugh. His original channel name was Narrow Cathadjor. What the hell? Envy's videos at first had nothing to do with video games. His top 10s are trash because his opinions are just straight up wrong. He stopped the frustration series and moved all the old ones to the second channel. Envy's videos are so bad that even one of his Patreon supporters made an everything wrong with parody about one of his top 10s. But honestly, that video is seriously awesome. How on Nathaniel Rage is still on hiatus. He used to have this slogan called striving for originality, but why? He makes top 10s a reaction action videos, real original, uh -huh. NB has the most cringeworthy voice. It's like a second rate MatPat. He jumps onto bandy wagons and will make parodies of trends for the views. His Gamescrapper ads sucked. 
Nathaniel's thumbnails are so obnoxious. He just has to use that hot bait, even with his update videos. Also, just using some random picture as a background and adding Gaussian blur is a pretty lazy way of making thumbnails. NB used to make fact videos, as if we needed more of those. His hatred for Pink Gold Peach is way too extreme. He probably secretly loves her. Some of his older top 10s have lame memes thrown in for fake humor and is just filler crap. Nathaniel is trying too hard to be a normal boots or hidden block clone. NB literally can't say words right. Some people actually think English is his second language. How can he fail that badly at speaking? Why does he love Super Mario 64 so much? I mean, it's not that good. He honestly shouldn't call himself a speedrunner. His best times are nowhere near as good as the world records. So NB streams on YouTube, but not on Twitch enough. So NB streams on Twitch, but not on YouTube enough. He really should stop spamming comments all over YouTube videos. Most of his Instagram photos are just pictures of him in his room. Does he ever leave the house? No. No, no, not, not really, no. Seriously? Arrows and circles in the thumbnails? Like, I get it, okay? You want me to do the clicky click? Carl is way cooler than NB and should hack into this channel and just take it over. What is this faceless board breaker nonsense? Like I said, the beginning of his channel has nothing to do with games. Good lord, his first top 10 is actual trash. Like, bro, get a capture card at the very least and don't record in front of the TV. Windows Movie Maker. Get with the times, mate. Wait a second, you just straight up posted your English project from senior year of high school? How unprofessional. Who gives a damn about ice climbers? I sure don't. Wow, what a dick. Remember that strange phase on YouTube when everyone used a green screen when talking for no reason? Ah, the old days. He actually predicted Master Chief for Smash 4. Master Chief! Don't judge me. Oh, I'm judging you, okay? Dear God, is he about to do what I think he's about to do with that N64? Oh. Aw shit, I'm naked. Um, congratulations for coming off as a creep? You decide to describe. I'm not sure why he said describe instead of subscribe, but all right then. Wow, a phone video. That's some high quality YouTube content for a guy that had like 50k subs at the time. Remember when he announced that Amiiboverse show that never came out? Good job on that one. What the heck was this news show? NB's happy news? More like NB's cringy news. To keep up with YouTube's algorithm, one day NB uploaded a video of him drinking water at a thousand frames per second. Why? What, what, what made you do this? Oh no, dude, you took the joke way, way too far. 